The Drop with Frank and Brian is officially brought to you by Switch Suspension. Switch Suspension specializes in all vehicle chassis components. Lift kits, lowering kits, air ride suspension, wheels, tires, steering, and brake upgrades. They use all the best products from the best brands. And these guys are truck guys. You roll into their parking lot at the shop and they all drive custom vehicles. So they use their products that they sell on their own vehicles. So if you guys are looking for anything for your vehicles, whether you're just starting out or you just need some replacement parts or whatever, give them a call or visit their website, switchsuspension.com. Just in case you want Just to. In case, oh, yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. So, <laughs> so we're live. Hey, hey, we're live. Hey. All right. Uh, welcome to this week's episode. We have a lot of stuff going on. I don't know which one to look at. It's either this one, me and Brian, and we're sitting here with Jason Mulligan again. I don't know which camera to look at. Anyway, that I'll get that. Right. We got yeah. several okay. cameras. We'll see what, which one Brian decides to edit yeah. and use. <laughs> welcome to this week's episode. We're sitting down here at an undisclosed location with Jason Mulligan. Uh, we were just on the Auto Revolution podcast talking about truck shows. Uh, so if that's out, go check that out. It's really cool. And uh, check out all the rest of the Auto Revolution stuff going down. But yeah, so we're sitting here today and uh, yeah. to, to learn more about Jason. Well, yeah, thanks for, for I don't know, having me <laughs> no, or no, no, me no, no. having thank, you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having us <laughs> in yeah. your space. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it worked out really, really well. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. And, and that's, what, yeah, we were trying to see how we can kind of collaborate a little bit and, you know, especially you guys with the truck stuff and then. Yeah, hey, it's great to be on on your guys' podcast. Heck so. yeah, yeah. And this and it's also great to see what a professional setting looks like. I know. Like. I feel I feel a little <laughs> inadequate. I mean, semi professional. I mean, it's we go back to our offices and we're just like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. <laughs> Blurry Brian's back. Blurry well, Brian. we, 1080p Frank. <laughs> <laughs> He makes fun of me because all of his cameras are 4K. And yeah. Mine are only 1080. So oh, but 1080 what do you export as? 1080. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so it's there. just yeah. it's just a point oh, to it's, yeah, it's mess with you a little bit. Fun of me. I export yeah. in the, the Premiere set, uh, preset Twitter 1080p. So it's like oh, not even YouTube 1080p. No, not even because it's they're so long. I'm just like whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's what, a, yeah. We try to keep ours like an hour or so. Just yeah, keep it all manageable. But yeah, these yeah. things can go on for for hours and yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. We're, when we do these ones, we sort of just chop it up and talk, and just yeah. whatever happens, how long it goes, it goes. But yeah, so we're here. We want to tell it's for our, our listeners who don't know, our watchers, listeners who don't know who you are. You want to like kind of fill us in. Uh, Jason Mulligan, obviously, um, Auto Revolution. Um, we do a lot of video content, podcasts. Uh, but my background has come from you know magazines. Uh, graphic design, you know, back to 20 something years ago. Um, I mean, for me, I grew up, you know, interested in cars, you know, a little bit. My dad obviously enjoyed cars, but more of the muscle car stuff. Um, but then my cousin, uh, Chris Malik, actually in 96, had a 96 Silverado that Brian Gendro body dropped. Oh, wow. Um, cool. And, and he actually showed it for, at, uh, well, no, Forbidden, you said it started in 90 98. Eight. Okay, he might have shown it 98 at, at Forbidden, maybe. I might. I he, have footage, walk-around footage of that show. So it was a blue extended cab, Silverado, body dropped. Um, and he ended up going on. He uh, managed a shop in Temecula, and then he, for a lot of the later on stuff, he built a lot of stuff for Craig Elder. Oh, okay. uh, so all the crazy lifted trucks, um, you know, the van, the Tahoe and stuff. But yeah, yeah he did a lot of the lifted stuff for him. Um, and he still actually works for him on the their farm today. So yeah, really? that's cool. Um, but that, that got me into the truck side of it. Um, and so I always wanted to have that, that Chevy, that OBS truck, um, and was able to get that in college, start building that out. Um, and that kind of helped lead to a lot of, you know, so last a lot night of stuff. when we were talking last night, um, like kind of just going over our mental notes and stuff about mm -hmm. this. And like, I remembered that you started a web page, mm -hmm. like uh, show coverage. And yeah. I could not for the life of me remember, remember what, what it was. was. <laughs> and when you said it and I was like, yeah, Bling, that's what yeah. it was. Same. Show yeah. truck scene. Show truck scene. Yeah. 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 yeah Cause it was, uh, 
It was your website. It was Truck Run, and it was um, so called so customs. customs. Those were yeah, mm-hmm. a few of the. Well, then you had like the the, 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 the ghost one, which was sporttruck.com. Oh, that was also you. Yeah, no, that wasn't no, mine. Oh, no, that, but that was around. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. No one kind of knew who that was, really. I, I mean, I can't remember the guy's name. I've met him. I know yeah. who it is, but and it was, was just one guy. But yeah, he was at everything. a lot of the events. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, the, the show truck scene started probably around 2005, maybe 2004. Um, and that came from, we were all, you know, Chevy truck guys. And we, there was like some, some other forums, um, called full size Chevy GM full size.com. And then also, like you said, you know, there was SoCal customs, there's like the show coverage sites. Mm -hmm. And so we like, you know, obviously on the influence and impact podcast on the truck shows, we started kind of that cause we kind of got left out of show coverage at forbidden. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and we're like, well, cause me and the other guy, Chachi, we were both graphic design guys. So we're like, well, we can do this. Yeah. I was already taking photos at shows and stuff like that. Um, but we added, we had a forum element to it as well. Yep. Um, and that came from, we were all on the GM full size forums and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So we're just like, okay, we'll do show coverage features and, um, you know, forums. And so we, we did that for, for a handful of years and what actually helped me get into magazines and doing work for magazines was from that, I started, you know, I, I kind of wanted to get into the magazine thing yeah. there. That was kind of like the, I think everybody the top did. thing, yeah, the everybody thing did for, that time. for that time, you know, the mid two thousands. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started, I, w- I started to do actually some writing to, of the, shows and stuff like that like hey let me do a little write-up no no so this is on on show truck oh, scene show truck. rather than own. just oh, pictures okay. i was like oh, let me do a little, do a little like, write-up okay. on it yeah, yeah yeah um but then uh i think i was at the west coast customs open house like right when they opened in corona mm-hmm. um and then uh gil luna uh from tailgate was there we were talking hanging out and stuff and he had seen i guess some of the show truck scene stuff because he uh and chris and like the stream of those guys did ludicrous mm-hmm. and so i had done coverage on that and he's like well hey and you know he's like hey you know the go easy guys i want to do a shop feature on them can you help set that up that turned into can you help me shoot it can you write it you know and then i started doing show coverage and features for tailgate magazine oh, cool. um and 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 that went away uh you know like right when the recessions hit you know that they cut that magazine yeah um, I always said tailgate was like, it was a little too late in, in becoming a magazine because it, they it were was, all about the party and like, they were yeah, like, yeah, kind of like the easy rider. Well, it was the uh, same company same as company, e- right? easy rider. Mm-hmm. So, so, but then, but they came out when truck runs were going away. True. So if they would have came out in like mid early nineties, yeah. that magazine oh, yeah, would have been, been. And you, you also got to think too. Yeah. There was competition wise. There was, uh, you know, street trucks, mini truck and truck and sport truck, 10 trucks. Yeah. Like there was tons of competition for, for a magazine and, you know, it, it mimicked the easy rider biker kind of yeah. lifestyle models on every, mm-hmm. you know, I had to shoot a model with every feature. Yeah. You know, you had the show coverage that was more kind of risque, the, the, risque, that, the lifestyle whole, uh, stuff. I remember yeah. they had the, like the, the extension to that was like the website. Like you could go like throughout the magazine, they would like put little links oh. in there that you could go visit. And it was like the spicy thing or something. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember. <laughs> but, but I think like, I, like they, honestly, they just started like 10 years too late. Mm. It yeah. just seemed like, cause imagine tailgate at the truck runs and the risque stuff they could have shown. No. There. And that's, oh, yeah. yeah. And cause even then when they sold on stands, it was in the, the plastic the pla- yeah, uh, yeah, I remember. cover. And, but I, I do know that, that cause original editor of that was John Gilbert, who yep. later went on to do classic trucks magazine, do, uh, I think he works for super Chevy hot rod, like all that stuff. But he came from the biker side of it. And, you know, so that was the, and I even remember we were talking about drop zone earlier. I was in, I was one, I was shooting a couple features up there and that was like my first like major show that I went to like representing tailgate. Um, and I remember going up to somebody uh, who, and this is before I was in relaxed atmosphere, and this was one of our Oregon guys that I, you know, later knew more and stuff. And I wanted to feature his truck. He had a, a an S10 Blazer and S10 Square Body, mm-hmm. and they were like similar painted and all that. And I wanted mm-hmm. to do shoot, and he said no because of tailgate. And I'm like, well, okay, why? And then I even asked like Juan and Alfonso, like some of the, the RA guys that I knew, like. Hey, can you like 
talk to this guy. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. what's the deal? And it was because of a comment made about his blazer. Because, like, John Gilbert would write really weird captions oh, yeah. and really oh, weird yeah. stories mm-hmm. in Tailgate. And like I said, that was kind of the style for that. Mm-hmm. But it offended this guy. And so he was like, no, nah, I don't want anything wow. to do with Tailgate. Really? Um, so, but yeah, I shot a handful of features, you know, there on that. And, and that kind of helped to, it's, okay, I, I want to go to these shows. Well, I can make a few hundred bucks, cover that's, my cost of yeah, it. That's ex- that's how we all ended up in this situation. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what it was where I knew, okay, I knew I could do show coverage and get X amount. I could mm-hmm. do at least two features probably, yep. get X amount. That would pay for my trip, give me a couple hundred bucks, and I'm good. Yeah, yeah. and just have fun. Yeah. Um, and then during the week at that time, I worked at a company called Icon Media. So that's what I was going to say because um, I was like, yeah, he worked at where Low Life Mike used to work, John O'Neill used to work, but... Mm-hmm. Were you were were you there before? Yeah. So Icon is in Orange County, and it's a studio, right? Yeah. So uh, maybe backtrack a little bit. So, yeah. I mean, you know, my background's graphic design. That's what I went to college for. Um, actually, while I was still in college and going to the shows, I got connected with with Brandon at Infinite Design at the oh. time, oh, okay. Field Market. Um, and so I, you, I either intern or just kind of freelance for him a little bit, um, and a, a lot of it what I see it as is you had Daniel, who's the amazing artist. Yeah. Well, he would get, you know, jobs for like a, a construction company or something that someone just wants something simple. And you're putting it's that It's like, together. why, yeah. Why have him, you know, waste his time on yeah, like yeah. simple little stuff, you know? And so he just p- would pay me to do that. Um, and he was, I was trying to do a clothing line at that time. Everyone was trying to, you know, a mm-hmm. lot of people were trying to do shirts. What was the name, like of, name of your line? Union clothing. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I saw some designs and stuff. So maybe <laughs> if you want to put pictures up or whatever, but, That's awesome. um, and so that, and I actually worked, I did, uh, some layout work with him. He started a magazine. It was kind of like LA weekly OC mm-hmm. weekly called inland cut. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you were going to say skinny. I was like, uh, hold on. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're talking yeah. about though. Um, but no, so I did some layouts and, and design work for, for with Brandon on that magazine and just kept going. Then got a full-time job at Audiobon, uh, doing graphic design for them and, uh, was able to get a job at icon media. Um, cause actually, uh, my friend Brian, who was a sales guy at intro wheels. And I was like, who does your guys' photography and design? Or can I, you know, I wanted to do their work and he's like, Oh, well we use this company. Yeah. So I just applied and, and got awesome. a job there. Um, but yeah, so icon media, um, graphic design firm, website design firm and studio, um, photography, but like they, most of their kind of bread and butter was wheel companies and tire yeah. companies. And like they, they had it locked and dialed for doing, uh, product photography for wheels. Yeah. I mean, they had a whole process, standard angles yeah. and they were close clean to up all the wheel companies. And that, yeah. And that's, and I think they, they got their start on from like wheel warehouse, which is Anaheim. And then, yeah, all the wheel companies at that time were are they still, Orange is County, Icon LA. still around? Yeah, as, as far as I know, they still are. The um, some of the owners had kind of split, and then one of them passed away a few years ago, um, and it's still going on. But yeah, uh, Low Life Mike, um, we were looking to. This is probably two. Well, it would have been two thousand seven, but yeah. we wanted video, wanted to start doing video work, and I knew Mike. And he was at the time not wanting to travel as much and yeah. wanted a, a normal job because he's having a kid. So got Mike hired on there. Um, and then John O'Neill started working there after I went to Street Trucks. Yeah. So we, kind of, even though he managed the studio more for the photography, we kind of swapped. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because in, in some, in a, in a way. Because yeah. he was at Street Trucks. Yeah. And you were at Icon. And, and doing you, Tailgate and, is a yeah. little bit. Yeah. And then you go from Icon straight into Street Trucks? So. Like I said, so I, th- I think it was like a April 2008 when Tailgate went all away. Of, and all of this stuff to me seems like two months ago. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, no, and that's what's crazy when you think, really you're like, oh, that was like 10 years ago. Like, okay, well, no, it was actually like... Almost 20 years ago. <laughs> almost 20 years ago. More 15 years ago. Mm, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, so the Tailgate uh, went away. And Gil was trying to take it a little bit more legit than the risque stuff, but mm-hmm. had too much competition. Yeah. And then the recession was starting, like everyone was pulling their ads, stuff like that. So I 
had already talked to Travis uh, Noak at Street Trucks, and because I'd had a, a, a few trucks lined up to shoot, or I'd already shot mm-hmm. that. Hey, do you want you know? Basically, I was going to start freelance for Street Trucks, um, and then at Icon Media, our business started to slow down because like Ultra Wheel was probably my main client there, them and Ready Lift, and Ultra Wheel cut their budget to like a fifth of what it was oh, marketing really? wise. And so they weren't going to SEMA. They yeah. weren't doing as many ads. Like it just, everything shrunk down. Like, you know, you look at a lot of the disposable income of, you know, what we do, right. all that started to hit before even like the major recession hit. Yeah. Right. So I got, I got laid off from there. Um, and basically was, I applied, you know, hit up Travis at street trucks. It was like, uh, I just got laid off. I'm looking for either an art director job or editorial. I, you know, I could do either yeah. and ended up getting hired there and, and kind of kept going with that. And that's kind of at least the start of the, yeah. So <laughs> the magazine, it's all press. Stuff. It's just weird. Cause like you don't, I don't think things are so long ago and they were that mm-hmm. long ago. Like right. when did street trucks magazine, when did they start? Cause I remember 99. Was it that long ago? Mm-hmm. Cause I remember being at council when they came up, when they went up and talked about it. Well, and that's, I, really. I remember them, you know, hearing, them saying, you know, that they, they, I, the first issue was August 99. So that probably came out June or July or whatever, but they, I think had even like in the springtime, they had been pushing, they had been signing people up for subscriptions yeah. cause everybody knew Courtney, Brian, Steve Stillwell, you know, cause they had done truck and mini truck and then all yeah. that. And Stillwell's, you know, started trucking back in the seventies. Um, and so they were like, Hey, we got this new magazine. And I do remember it was, the first all color automotive magazine. Yeah. Know, oh, that ever yeah. came out. Okay. Yeah. Street because trucks. Tr- mini trucking and trucking had black and black white and pages. Yeah. Like a lot of the tech and some of the features would be all black and white. Yeah. yeah. And even like an, an ad, you had to pay extra for a color ad, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, what's funny. Yeah. We talk magazines. Whereas like, I remember even being at the grocery store the other day and it's like magazine sections about that yeah. big, Yeah, you know? Um, but yeah, they started in 1999 and I, I, started there in 2008 and then I became editor of that in 2011. So when, when you start, left. did you start as an art director or just, no, I started as a, uh, like either a associate, associate editor, editor or feature editor. I can't remember which, okay. but basically I was okay. Now I'm, I'm just going to shows, um, d- doing feature shots, you know, show coverage yeah. and then just kind of, and then after, there. um, and then when did you become that you became the editor of that? Yeah. In 2011. Yeah. Travis left. Um, is that when he got into real estate? Yeah. Well, his family did, uh, real commercial real yeah. estate. And so he basically I'm joined try- up with them. I'm trying to put this time cause I know all these events that happen, but yeah. they weren't on my radar as far as like, imp- not imp- like important to me, but like it, I was also it's, going, everything's happening. Yeah. You, everything's happening. Cause I was yeah. going through like grinder magazine yeah. right before yeah, the you're- recession hit. So mm-hmm. like that affected that. And then I was trying to just like get my into all these, you know, yeah, you started doing the video stuff, doing the DVDs. Yeah, and, like 2010-ish, doing mm-hmm. that stuff. So I'm just trying to put this timeline together. To see what, where you were at. Where and I was at. Uh-huh. Yeah. And all this <laughs> stuff. Well, you, you were working with like mini trucking and stuff but previous to that, though, for a while, right? Like freelancing or? Like freelancing, yeah, like writing articles and stuff when Galen was there. Mm-hmm. Okay, when, yeah. And uh, that was like, what, 2006 or seven? No, well, because he was at it, Sport Truck. He was at Sport Truck. He went from, me and him started Grinder Magazine. That's and right. And then... He went uh, to Sport Truck. He was associate for Sport Truck, and then he went associate for Mini Truck, and and I just don't remember the years, but I think it was like nine, ten ish, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was all around, yeah, around that period. Yeah. When yeah. did when did Ernie uh, run the magazine? That was so like, that would have been that's like two thousand seven, oh seven. Because yeah. I remember 06. actually we were talking at. Uh, whatever it was spring splash whatever that that run was that was right when ernie got the job yep. there because ernie had been doing a, him and lowlife mike were like the tailgate tailgate people like mm-hmm. i think gill had someone like back east and then ernie was like his main guy yeah. mm-hmm. so when ernie got the job at mini truck and you know he wasn't doing tailgate anymore yeah. and that allowed me to kind of step up more on oh, tailgate I where i was actually putting like organizing what would be in an issue, um, doing more shoots than just, hey, a couple things here yeah. and there. So that's so. the kind of stuff that I remember happening. Mm-hmm. 
but they just it was happening in a different space than my than yeah than my yeah life. it was yeah. kind of periphery to, yeah, to what yeah, yeah. what you were doing but we were all connected and stuff like yeah. that because yeah you had you know you were doing the print magazine where to, to me at least and correct me if I'm wrong grinder was you you looked at it as the mini trucking for cars it was just everything. But it was or, like, or everything, it was including like, cars. Including yeah, if stuff, it was a yeah. lifted truck, it was a car. It was just mini truck style. Yeah, like it didn't matter what it didn't have. I remember when we the first issue we had a mini truck on the cover, and mm-hmm. Lance got really mad at us and wrote about us. <laughs> oh, really? He wrote about us in Mini Truck and Magazine. Oh, oh wow. really? He was like my friend. But did he not mention what the name? No, of the he magazine? mentioned the magazine. Okay, I was just say, hey, you're like, hey, like, all right, plug. Yeah, heck yeah this <laughs> that's cool. That's yeah. the best best yeah. publicity. But when you were talking about competition. um a lot of people don't realize that back in the day, like there was competition. Mm-hmm. The magazines would be at SEMA and they would be like, that's mine. That's mine. That's mine. Yeah. And then if you got shot for one, you were not running in the other. And it's funny cause I take that same mentality to now and it's, but the magazines, the people that own and run the magazines now are totally different than back. So it's almost like that still happens, but not as much. It, a lot of it was, it was especially the cover. Yeah. Because back then, the only thing that mattered, I mean, aside from advertising money, but the only thing that mattered and how you gauged success of a magazine or an issue was newsstand sales. Yeah. So kind of the theory was, is if you saw this blue Chevy truck on the cover of Truckin', and then either that same month or two months later, you see it on the newsstand, it's on the cover of Street Truck's, the person, the reader is going to go, Oh, I already saw that truck. Oh, and not by the I'm magazine. Not, and not mm-hmm. by that issue. So that's where the competition was of the, you know, we'll shoot this, you shoot that. Like, and, and me and like, you know, Mike Alexander and stuff, like we, um, we kind of bounced it off each other, especially because he was mini trucking. Yeah. So it was like, All right. I, it wasn't know, a, mi- it wasn't a competition, but it, not as much on that. Yeah. yeah Cause, you know, with street trucks, we would include a mini truck in every issue. Maybe we'd do one on the cover every yeah, year or two. Yeah, that, but that wasn't our core on our core thing. Yeah. So it was kind of like, yeah, we you know default. Yeah, go for it. You know, or mm-hmm. or sometimes there would be something where, hey, I really want this, and we would do it. the The main thing I had was uh, Truckin yeah. magazine, um, which even then, like Truckin was always to me seemed like a little bit different demographic than street trucks. Definitely, yeah. but it started towards the end. Started to kind of kind of meet where a lot of the custom stuff was yeah. putting on trucking because they were i'll be honest like trucking was the the king and they started dropping and street trucks you know and sport trucks started kind of climbing up yeah um so there was some battles like even like i'm there you know dan that you know from trucking yeah. there and the truck owners right there <laughs> yeah and and for me i always at least took the hey I would like to shoot your truck. This is what we can do. Let me know. Whereas, you know, other people might kind of... They were more bullish. More more bullish, more like, well, if you want to be in a second-rate magazine or if you want to... Like, <laughs> yeah, that seems I'm gonna, to be... Like, a, more I, I attitude that. on it. Yeah. But that actually, I think, helped because I'd, I'd get calls from guys that had a truck on the cover of a magazine that would either experience that or, or heard about that and just didn't want anything having to do with it. And yeah. they'd go, okay, you're getting all my stuff I build from now on because I don't want to deal with any of that. I see. You know, it, so it's just, and a lot of times then too, you just build up a network where you'd get a phone call from a shop or somebody and, you know, they're three months out from finishing a truck, but. But they promise it to you. Hey, I want, yeah. I'd like, you want, you're interested in this, you want to shoot it. And that's how usually most of them happen. It's yeah. always, it's usually always, always just at the show with something we hadn't seen before yeah. or something new. SEMA was like the like the like a, the ocean mm-hmm. and then you would throw blood into the water and then <laughs> you would like all the magazines you would guys. like show yeah. yeah it was I remember cuz I was I was just introduced to Dan at Truck and so I was shooting some stuff for him mm-hmm. and um I think it was when Kevin was the editor at Street Trucks I was starting to shoot I just don't I don't remember these timelines but I just remember it was just like Well Dan was at Truck and and he left a little before I left street trucks. Okay. So Kevin Aguilar was at sport truck and then brought him back on street trucks. And Jeremy cook was at truck and at the same same time. time. Okay. Yeah. 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 So there was, I just remember it was, I was just like a, like these people are crazy. 
<laughs> like they were nutty, man. I was like, whatever, just tell me what to shoot. I don't even yeah. care. <laughs> well, and that's too for yeah, freelance guys. And I, I I started to try to use some of the freelance guys more, especially you know you had killer photographers like Kevin, mm. John Jackson, like all these guys where they're out and hey, yeah, go shoot this because. I remember talking about SEMA for a long time. I know it was Saturday morning, you know, after SEMA, 5 a.m. at the lake bed, dry lake bed out there, and just basically rack them up and start shooting. Yeah. Like, I, I remember a couple years ago, we, you know, six or seven features. And, the, but to me, like, the, with that, like, the light is beautiful out there for maybe 45 minutes. I've never been out there on the lake bed no you never my entire freelancing photography sema life Mm -hmm. friday i'm going home i (laughs) yeah i mean that's like that was not that was always nice like what time four in the morning yeah it was always because yeah before sunrise yeah and trying to get the truck owners out there early after they a week of this and then friday night they're like finally don't have to get the trucks taken care of anymore and like and and half the time either you and the truck owners were late night thrashing Mm. before SEMA and it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, and so we would try to do a bunch of shots and a lot of people, some people at that time would want to be shot out there. Like that was a thing. That was was like a goal. Yeah. That was kind of a thing. But then like I looked at it as, okay, we've got all these trucks. Yeah. A lot of them are other States, other places in the country. So yeah, this is the opportunity to get them. But then like a lot of your content for the next, three or four months it's all looks the same same, especially if you're doing cover vehicles you know shoots it's all the same background that's an interesting question that i have so like you're there's this so your street trucks and you're trucking and and you guys are competing for to get you know specific covers and stuff like that so you line up all these trucks you shoot them all does it become at some point just a thing just to get the content and not the quality because you said that the light is only good for a certain amount of time is it just simply at it, that point, just getting, getting it, getting it, getting it? A lot it? of the, I, in my opinion, a lot of the magazine mentality from at when I started there and previous was that, you know, where, like I said, because we would be on the lake bed, trucking would be on the lake bed, diesel world would be on the lake bed, diesel power would be on the lake bed. Like, and there was enough room, but it was like everything looked the same. But right. yeah, you would bang out several features, just get the content, get the truck, but. I, I kind of wanted to try to, especially when it became magazines became started to become a little more not special. as popular yeah. as special or, mm-hmm. or cutting down on paper, cutting down on distribution. Mm-hmm. Like when it became more, you know, not a slam dunk for sales and stuff, like put more f- quality into it, put some more photography style into it and you know a lot of guys Artistic we're kind of doing that like johnny o brian mccormick were mm-hmm. were really you know i remember brian mccormick telling me like the first time he did a, a cross lit you know horizon shot on a black truck whereas before it was always like the staple was you know almost sunset sun behind you three quarter shot like that was the standard shot mm-hmm. i um, eventually we're going to have, we're going to go talk to John O'Neill and talk about this subject. But like, I remember the, the, the timeline when it became okay to get more artistic mm-hmm. in the magazine's world. What, what, yeah. What, I, what was that with your perspective? It was just like you would, you, you had the, the internet, the web. So you had like yeah. speed hunters and all these like great photographers doing like low depth of field shots mm-hmm. and like, Really long close lens, up, long yeah. lens, close up on the wheels. Just these abstract shots, which you would never see in the magazine. The magazine no. was always front three quarter. It, like it was informational to me. It, is what yeah. what a lot uh-huh. of the and it, it, it's kind of weird because you know, like I said, I came from craft design background. I was doing photography in my classes. Like my senior project was called vehicular art. So I was doing like s- tight shots, like artistic style of of a lot of vehicles and. Going in the magazine, yeah, it became like kind of standard where you need, yeah. all right, I need a front three-quarter shot, rear three-quarter shot. I need a shot of the dash from like this it perspective. Like, like very mechanical. Shot of the seats. Yeah, like, it was like, just. Like Mad Libs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was just kind of insert shot. You know, uh-huh. you need these eight shots or whatever, and, and you're fine. And, and yeah, I know, like you are saying, you started seeing other photographers, and I think like the Speed Hunters and like the Larry Chens and stuff. The younger. He came from a landscape 
photography yeah. background or, or maybe wildlife or something. So his entire approach. process and approach was different than a it, car person. And mm-hmm. you just saw these, you, this younger group of people yeah. coming up and with digital cameras and access to just more things. Yeah. Different style of lenses. Like, and, uh, it became more affordable for, for people there, to get it's more um, accessible. Accessible, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That kind of like what video's doing, like the video process that yeah. it went through after that. But yeah, so you would see those different style of shots. And I remember John just saying, like, Oh, I, I'm allowed to break out of this shell now. I can mm-hmm. do things differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I know he started doing that and, and I think now it's not as popular, but I know back then and people overdid it, but like the H D R style photography. Oh, I know yeah, John yeah. was doing kind of a lot of that and and that's you know what's funny um one of my favorite shots that i did was up in uh in washington is that sitting pretty there was a silver c10 like a really nice c10 we put it on the on the cover and stuff and i was shooting it the day after the show and you know northwest it was just it was misty foggy oh, yeah, cool. all that and Whereas usually you always wanted the sunrise, you know, sunrise, yeah. sunset, this and that. And this your was, brain's t- like you're going. It's like your brain's going. You're not supposed to shoot this now, but mm-hmm. it looks really nice. It, yeah. and, and like the window was kind of fogged up, so yeah. it had. And I did, I did long lens, low depth of field, you know, or yeah, low depth of field, you know, low f stop, mm-hmm. and you know, shallow depth of field, is shallow depth of field, yeah, yeah. shallow depth. Yeah, yeah I was like, oh wait, 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 no, that's not right. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was like, low depth. Well, no, that's not right. <laughs> yeah. Um. And like the, I think the cover shot was, and that's the thing too. When I became the editor, it was like, all right, well, I can do what I want. <laughs> so I was like trying different things, yeah. you know, doing different stuff. And so like the cover of that was a front shot, like split in half, basically, of you know the C10. And it, but it had like it looked almost like a painting in the background because of the the foggy mist and the mm-hmm. blown out, you know, background. And so it was just doing more artistic stuff or like you know, on the interior shots, like you don't have to show the entire dash in one shot, yeah. mm-hmm. but Hey, maybe it's got a really cool, you know, gauge display yeah, or, or, or a shifter or an emblem. Or an emblem. Or, yeah. So let's do, you know, focus on that. And you can still get the whole dash, but the dash is blown out except for the emblem. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, look at it. And what I think should be done with video photography for a, a car is yeah. It's highlight the features, highlight what's unique well, and, look at your, and, and look beautiful at, on it. Look you at know? your eyes. Yeah, like right now you're the only thing in focus, and if I go here, you're the only. In, I can mm-hmm. still see him. Mm-hmm. He's there. I can still see what's happening mm-hmm. yeah. in this room. So and it gives you context for what's happening, but it focuses on the subject a little exactly. More. Like yeah. think of an interior you picture of a car, and you want to do the the shifter. You know, you can still back up and get that in fo- and still yeah. see what it highlight doing. the shifter. Yeah. You know, it's a unique shifter, so highlight that. Mm-hmm. Don't don't got to go f11 and a wide shot to show the whole interior when yeah. that's maybe the focus. Which is crazy because you can. Frame it the same exact way and mm-hmm. change that F stop. You yeah. get a completely different feel. One's a boring shot and one's a super interesting shot. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and that I think too came with lenses being more available and more, you know, the higher end where you'd have the low F, you know, F stop like 2.8 or 1.8s. Yeah. Versus like your kit lenses, you know, F4, F5, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. all that where just the quality became better. Yeah. Um, and also too, yeah, going from, you know, the, the film where, and this was years before I started there, but you know, they used to do all film stuff where you, you kind of had to just be safe. Yeah, you know, yeah. you, you couldn't check oh, you couldn't, to see. Oh yeah, that makes sense. And you know, where it was kind of like, okay, let's, let's just make sure we got it. Mm-hmm. You know, so the, you know, yeah, there were some cool shots or cool setups. Like I always liked, you know, the, the group shots or like the overhead shots or someone working on the the truck or something but you weren't getting maybe crazy with the lighting or you know artistic because you just yeah, needed no. to make sure you were good yeah mm-hmm. um and then you know they started doing digital i remember steve Stillwell saying like they did uh like a tech story that was all digital and just to see like if you know this is like probably 2003 or something yeah. and you couldn't tell the difference at that time for like a tech story but mm-hmm. you weren't going to shoot a cover it, you know, with image a with a digital at that time. And then obviously everything got better and the quality yeah. and stuff. Is, yeah. I really liked being able to, to bring in some of that kind of art to it. Cause it, 
that's what I mean to me that's what drew me into trucks and, and, and custom cars is the creativity behind all you know all of it yeah because you're you're putting your own spin on it you're putting your own flavor taste style onto it um, so like I remember then you know later on started messing around with like the light painting you know trying to you know start doing that um, you know and then like a lot of guys you know Kevin Aguilar Tim Sutton um, John Jackson would you know do strobes you know to try to give different looks and stuff like that and or using nd filters yeah. and you know it it's just just being creative with I, it and, i remember we were going out to scout some sh- video locations me and uh johnny johnny o and we were so we went to salt and sea and we mm. just went out there and just kind of walked around drove around and he we were both taking pictures and we get back and he uploads his photos and i went you're like what so I sent him my photos. Like, I said, why, do why yours don't look, mine yeah. <laughs> look like yours? Yeah. And he and very quickly explained a couple things. And I was like, oh. Mm-hmm. Like, just those little tidbits of information mm-hmm. just kind of yeah. help alter the course. of Because you stop doing what you did, and then you just change it a little bit. And then each little thing, you learn more. But Yeah, and then you, you start pulling all those yeah. little things together and, and well, that's what we often thing. talk about when people ask us like, well, how do you do this stuff? Or like, cause it always starts with, well, what kind of gear makes that? It's not, it's not, and that's it's, always, the, it's <laughs> asking the right questions like you, like how, yeah. how did you do that? Well, why, why does yours look better than mine? I always and then tell that people, opens you up. Well, they're, the, they're like, well, what, how do I do this? I'm like, well, find a picture you like mm-hmm. and then ask how they did that photo. Yeah. What do you like about that? The shallow depth, the, well, I'm calling it low depth of field now. <laughs> the shallow depth of field are like this. Like you have to yeah. understand how the that longer, was made. And that's the thing too. There's there's a lot of the science into it that to me, it's just it's just how figuring out how to make something look how you want. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. like even the longer lens stuff where it compresses the background. So then your, your wide shot with a like a wider angle or something is, even if you have low depth of field to then a long lens, even with higher depth of field, mm-hmm. shallow or whatever, uh, not shallow, <laughs> um, the opposite of op- that. deeper. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's going to look completely different because it's your compression and your, your, uh, distortion is going to be completely different. Yeah. So, I mean, it was the whole joke of, you know, the camera adds 20 pounds and yeah. stuff like that on, you know, with TV it's cause yeah, if you have a wide angle, you're, stretching this way whereas yeah. you know longer lens or something you're compressing yeah. that way mm-hmm. you know well, it's so just like making a small space look big so you, mm-hmm. doing video work or anything you like you walk into a place like hey can you make this look bigger than it is no problem you yeah. know what i mean like <laughs> let me widen this sucker up yep it's uh it, it all plays a role in it yeah and and you know i remember uh so brian mccormick he started after street trucks and then 10 trucks or whatever the one that they kind of. So who did 10 trucks? So from my understanding that started out, and that's what's funny. Like when we're talking about, you know, show truck scene and then this, like the web stuff where like, man, I should have kept that going because it would have been <laughs> huge now, but yeah, 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 at yeah. the time you don't necessarily yeah. think. So from my understanding, that was originally a forum online because Bob Hayes had a part in that, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, well, because Bob Hayes was a sales guy for street trucks That's for right. several yeah. years. And then uh, Stillwell, McCormick, Courtney, those guys, they left street trucks when it was purchased, um, 2005, I think. And the so there was like, f- I think it was like Chevy Truck World, Ford Truck com, like all these like marketplaces and forums and stuff. And I guess they wanted to do a magazine version, you know, because it's, kind of like it was opposite back then yeah. you know where you have a website but magazines where you make print, the money yeah, right um and so they hired on those guys to do it and then brian left he got the marketing job at ready lift and so when i was at icon media ready lift was one of my clients um and so then i started as when i was starting to do stuff for tailgate was you know when he was the marketing guy and before he started doing all the design work for for them at the time so he'd come in we would sit down, we, you know, go over this flyer or brochure or whatever. And, and then we would start talking about photography and he would give me tips on what I was doing, you know, and I remember him telling me how to do a cross lit, you know, thing to get that gold horizon line on it. And then I was, you know, some Photoshop tips of like sharpening things up. Cause mm-hmm. you know, the camera I was using back then, like my, you know, phone's 10 times better than it. Yeah. So he's like, Hey, if you know, run this little, you know, thing on Photoshop and it'll sharpen the edges up and make it 
you know like pop out a little bit yeah. more yeah so that's what it is just just learning along the yeah. way and mm-hmm. getting those you know tips from people so where did so all of this um college art like all of the icon street trucks tailgate freelancing all this stuff where did it kind of intersect with auto revolution like where because that's where we're at now yeah yeah so, so how did that process start so when I was at, you know, street trucks was starting to try to do more digital, you know, more online stuff, you know, all the social channels were, that was when that stuff was getting big and, and popular. Um, we had our website we were doing. Who was the editor of street trucks when we did the, the cruise with Mike Cotton? So that was m- Travis and then myself. And that was Travis's last, last hur- year, hurrah, whatever. Oh, it was, it was, yeah. I think probably end of that year we tried to do this road to doing, SEMA thing and yeah like so we st- it started in like st louis mm-hmm. yeah with cotton yeah well what's funny is me and mike alexander got in the titan drove from socal all the way oh, to back east yeah. all the way to virginia picked his truck up oh, turned, the black, the black truck, Tacoma. turned around yeah. drove to st louis spent i remember spent we spent <laughs> the night at mike cotton's house and then we unloaded do you have ham steaks <laughs> I don't know. When I went there and said this, he was like, "We're gonna get ham sticks." Like, in this little town, are. yeah, Bel- New- Belleville or Belleview. No, New ba- uh, New Baden is where. Oh yeah, that's right. Is. Yeah, Belleville's, Belleville's the other side. Yeah, yeah. The bigger yeah. town. That's but, where like um, Kyle and those guys are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's where uh, Oliver's truck got painted. Yeah. Um, but I just we, I, I remember sleeping a little bit, and then we woke up, and Mike Cotton tried to drive his truck, which is this square body Chevy with a blown LS with this supercharger yeah. sticking through the hood no windows mm. shaved nope. the windows so there's no windows in this thing mm-hmm. and so we got from like just uh east the east side of st louis we didn't get very far the first and day. he was trying he was trying to his was plan trying to was drive, to drive, drive it to vegas whole, yeah. trying to drive it to, which is insane which is insane <laughs> in november yeah, yeah or october these, november he yeah. made these like zipper things him and travis were in i have video footage of this <laughs> in the rain in this truck with no windows he made these like zip clear zipper plastic things <laughs> And the truck's getting, at, it's had to have been getting no more than seven miles to the gallon. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was like it was full, crazy huge built. Supercharger. Like, it was like Pro Street kind of yeah, style a little big bit. Big wheels, you know. a 26 inch billets, I think, in the back, or 24 inch billets. It's probably 24. Well, it might have been smaller than that, just big just tires. Big I know. tires. Yeah. <laughs> they, and then it broke in Oklahoma, and we, so we. Um, was it? He made it. They made that's it to pretty Oklahoma. Far. Made it to Oklahoma. That's, that's pretty just far. past Oklahoma pretty City. The, for, not the first day. The it was the second. Yeah. It broke the rear end, so we took the axle yeah. out. He tried to fix it, didn't go. So we load. We took Mike's truck off the trailer mm-hmm. and loaded his truck on the trailer, and then Mike drove the mini truck from Oklahoma to Vegas. So that was uh, the road to SEMA in street trucks, and I was just, yeah. That was 2011. Yeah, yeah. And that was a cool year too for SEMA. That's right. Went around when you were starting to put more digital stuff and videos into the street. Yeah, trucks, I had right? started doing some video uh, stuff, and a lot of that was. I mean, I had my Blazer that was being built at status at the time that uh, I thought maybe a year or two ago, the guy that bought it was going to finish it. And then I've heard some things that's that the might brass tracks, brass tacks. Yeah. Brass tacks. Yeah. Why do I call Oh, that's it? what you're the one you were that's talking about. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, and, and we can get into that and what maybe is happening with it. I would it love later, to but, hear about Yeah. Cause um, that, so that chassis was at that SEMA, right? That chassis was there. Yep. Um, so I was, you know, when I was going out there and doing, I was doing video with it. Cause and that was the time, you know, you were doing more video mm. as well. And that was because, yeah, the, the cameras were, you know, the Canon, yep. either the 5D or I think I had a D60 or something. That was, I had a, a T2i, so I had a 550D, which was like the okay. baby 5D. It was the yeah, first yeah, yeah. Rebel series to shoot 1080p. Yeah, video. Manual. All yeah, that and that was the thing because you could change the you could do manual focus or like the, the nifty 50, you know, yeah. cheap lens mm-hmm. that yep. you could get the depth of field that made it look cinematic yep. versus your camcorder or just mm-hmm. regular where it, it's just going to look like it's not going to look. Yeah. yeah right. It's, it's not going to look yeah. fancier like than it is. 24 frames to 30 and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, it, it made it more friendly for the consumers to, to do video. So started taking advantage of that. So, but I, I did some footage on that and then we were doing, we were finishing Courtney's, uh, Hallowell's truck, yep. his 53. Cause he, he passed away in the summertime um, we'd already been doing in the magazine, some stuff on his truck. Like he put it on S 10 chassis. Um, and so, you know, at devious, we ended up finishing that. So I was f- do, we were, you know, 
putting in the magazine, but I was also filming that because, hey, you know, that was, that was our friend, you know. Mm. And so, yeah, started to do more video stuff, you know. And then I think at, at that time, SEMA, you know, had gone, had shrunk quite a bit from the recession. Mm. And so by that time, um, feature vehicles, basically, it used to be where, and it's, it is now, if you're an exhibitor, um, you know, you have your booth and then you are allowed one feature vehicle for like five, 600 bucks, or you can buy specific spots for a few thousand dollars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were just hurting for oh, the, space you, and money. Any, 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 as many as you want. And so there was, I think one year it was like, they let us have four or five or, or just kind of kept going. And then I remember that that year, basically it was as many as you want. Yeah. So we, I think at Street Trucks, we had under ours, I think we had 13 Wow. trucks registered at SEMA, like Ernie's, yep. Mike's, I think Bobby Moore's. The Blazer, uh, the blazer, the cream and brown blazer, the oh, two-door um, that came from St. Louis, too. Yeah. I forgot his name. I Yeah. <laughs> Steve. Steven, yeah, yeah. Steven. Steven. Yeah. Um, um, Mike's truck. Yeah, Cotton. Yeah. And then we had, uh, well, Courtney's, I think, was under, and my frame were under AccuWear. Okay. I think they were registering of them, but then Oliver's truck... I think Oliver's dad's truck. That was like the best year Chico's, for me trucking at SEMA. Yeah. yeah, I remember I remember the same conversation that Oliver was having. That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, and then Chico's Titan, which was originally Courtney's yep. Titan. Um, oh. Yep. Yeah, so that was originally a, a street truck's project truck. Okay, that um, was built. That was the one of the first Titans to be built ever. That was the... the uh, it was originally like charcoal. Aaron did the the chassis. Is that the one? No, Devious, Devious did. Devious, yeah, Jeff. Yeah. Oh, okay. and Eric oh, Jackson know, okay, did the paint. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, no, I know which one you're talking yeah. about, but no, it's it's not that one. You're talking about the the red one. Is yeah, it's red the, now. It was or no, it's black. It was black. It was it's black now or I is the it first red now? That was bag was red. So originally it was charcoal, mm-hmm. and they had it body dropped and bagged. Um, at on the floor of a Nissan, uh, I think Ontario Nissan, on the dealership floor on the day that the Titan was like released. Oh wow! It was already done. So it was because we had a deal. Um, I mean, obviously, a lot of the magazine stuff you get press vehicles or stuff like that, but and like Chevy or Ford would lend stuff out. But I think with Nissan, they had a deal at that time at least where like here. Because, like, I remember when I started Street Trucks, we had the, the lifted Titan. It was, like, CST. orange. It was C, uh, CST in San Bernardino was the first yeah. company to, they had a, they had a, like, I don't want to say pre-production, but it was a, technically, like, a 2003 Titan. No, <laughs> like, no and that's what, what Courtney's, what, or what the, the one we're talking about is. It yeah. was, like, pre-production, like, yep. press, you know, deal, I, it had dealership plates and that's basically That's why I bought my like Titan, that. was that truck. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I was like, this is the coolest it had. And it was new. It, yeah. Yeah. And, but the lines were really good. And I remember they put TVs in the tailgate. Remember that for, for SEMA, they put TVs in the tailgate. Yeah. <laughs> and, that was the time of, of yeah, TVs yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was like factory charcoal. Then it was two toned, uh, red and charcoal with like tribal. Maybe I think that's Eric Jackson red from, yeah. yeah, I think Eric Jackson did that. And mm-hmm. then, it got repainted later where it was like silver with like just some red graphics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think it was bl- Chico when Chico had it, it was black and then he painted and then it, it got red. wrecked. Oh, did it get wrecked? I want to say he got hit by like a drunk driver driving oh, home wow. somewhere mm-hmm. and then he did it red. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And I think it's still red. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I saw Chico at Dino's and, and he still has it. And oh, that's so cool. Yeah. He will never sell that truck. Yeah. No, and that's especially because that was Courtney's, yeah, yeah. and then yeah, that's um, cool. That's so cool. and that, and that was cool too at that time. And we had that Titan, and then Courtney's fifty three next to each other in that that lineup. Because yeah. I think we had like two lineups of trucks. So <laughs> that was a cool year for like you're saying, like of mini truck, and it was just yep. just trucks. And that was like before the C tens started it was to take tr- over SEMA, and it, and and it was trucks, stuff. and it was like it felt like the everyday guy mini trucker that had just been like brought they like, finally we built had it SEMA yeah. trucks. not me personally but like just these grungy dirty mini truckers right were at SEMA with these yeah. be- like trucks. but they're all really they're nice really nice yeah. but in the front just mm-hmm. showcase like we were just like this now this is our show 
That's cool. kind of thing. Yeah. And that that was it was like a cool year for that. Yeah, no, definitely. Um but yeah, so that I then became the editor of Street Trucks. Um after that, started trying to push more on the digital the video stuff, you know, do the website. Um I ended up, I also started a couple years later doing we had a, a magazine called Maximum Drive. Um so there's a, a magazine called Drive, which was like a free kind of newspaper mm-hmm, style mm-hmm. like it would be in all the shops shows stuff like that so they wanted to make a newsstand version and so we did it uh it was like a higher price point it was l- larger like matte paper like the quality of it was yeah. really nice um and so i i became the editor of that as well as street trucks and kind of tried to put and what's funny is like for the first few issues I was just calling the same guys I would call for street trucks that also built cars, mm. but I never was able to shoot them before, yeah. you know, like, um, uh, and I mean, even like we had pony one, like, a, uh, the Buick that chop and block and pony and Chad did was oh, on yeah, the cover, yeah. yep. you know, one year with his, his Cadillac in the back, you know, the Corella or whatever, mm-hmm. which um, ultimately had not really a place to be. And that's, that's the thing too. So I was, I was looking at that of, okay, you know, yeah, this is going to go up against Hot Rod, um, you know, those types of magazines, but what are they doing or, or what are we, what can we do that's something they're not doing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I wanted, to, and I also really liked Garage Magazine, which was Jesse oh, yeah. James's yeah. Uh, magazine. And the funny thing on that, we, there was a, uh, I went on a shoot, Courtney was doing some some shoots for, for him, for them. And uh, we did a, Stu Thompson, who was a BMX mm-hmm. rider. So he did a, f- a feature on him, but he's also a, a Orange County Sheriff, or was at the time. So we went out and did shots in his little area in Orange County, you know, with him in, in full uniform yeah, and all that cool. stuff. And so there's, I think there's one shot in that issue where I'm in Courtney's truck. Courtney's taking the photo like I'm being pulled over, you know. And that's in, uh, that was in garage? Garage, garage magazine. Garage magazine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So thanks for those and check that out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I was, I was trying to like, okay, we can do – do the hot rod stuff, do, you know, so, okay, let me do, I like, you know, put some land speed Bonneville stuff in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, traditional hot rod stuff, do some history. Um, Cause that's what I've always liked was like the history, the stories, yeah. all that the kind culture, of stuff, the, the lifestyles mm-hmm. of it. Um, so, you know, kind of putting that kind of twist on the magazine. Cause it essentially could have just easily been a, good guys car show yeah. you know mm-hmm. kind of hot rod thing but let's you know put some of that in there um so did that and then 2014 um i you know was doing all of that doing the digital stuff um my my direct boss at the time kevin wilson who was uh editor of Truckin, editor of sport truck before that um and then he did the diesel stuff but he was our like director so all the magazines for, our, for automotive um so he had some health issues. He essentially retired um, and uh, had a new boss coming in that we were, were clashing, you know, yeah. and it was becoming pretty stressful and just wasn't fun <laughs> mm-hmm. to do that. And then what kind of compounded that was was Source uh, Interlink, which was trucking. Well, that's mini when it trucking. all started like kind of unraveling. They went bankrupt, you know, mm-hmm. they got, you know, Mini Trucking Magazine went away, a bunch of magazines went away. Um, what maybe some people don't know is that they also, they were a distribution company. So I think a third of our distribution went through them, even though we were competitors with magazines, they handled a lot of the distribution. So we were all basically told like, you know, there's a big old meet company meeting, like, okay, uh, we're going to have to, our, our distribution is going to go down. So we're going to print less copies and those copies are probably going to cost more uh, to distribute because we have to go with another company that charges a different, like it wasn't a flat rate. It was a percent. I don't know what it was, but it was different. So basically it was like, okay, you know, your jobs are going to get harder. Our magazines aren't going to be out as much. So sales are set, you know, ad sales are probably going to dip down. Budgets are going to have to tighten up all this, you know? And so I was, like I said, I was essentially in charge of the automotive digital at the time for social media, so website like stuff, perfect position. doing videos. No, well, and so I, you know, I said like, okay, well we don't have any of those problems 
distribution problems or costs if we're doing digital. Like, yeah. let's invest more in that. Like, can we hire someone to manage just that? Like, let's and it it didn't happen. Oh, they they they, they were not about that. No. So that's what I was going to ask. Do you was there like a a group of people who were still like optimistic? Like, this was going to come out of it and be okay. The what I think it was is especially at that time, like the ad sales team was selling like a banner ad on the site. Like a lot of people didn't necessarily know how to monetize digital and mm-hmm. web at the time. Not like, you know what it is now yeah. or the opportunities now. Um, and, and I think even like YouTube at that time wasn't paying like yeah, revenue. They, maybe yeah. they were, no, they or maybe were, they, that was just kind of becoming was, a thing. Yeah. It was becoming, they were paying because they were paying when I started in 2011. Oh, okay. So, um, but they went through different changes. Obviously there was a weird transition period of like traditional print mm-hmm. and traditional hard copy stuff, and tra- yeah. whatever it was. And then you had web. And as they made this crossover, they didn't, they didn't know how to make the crossover. So yeah. a lot of companies went away. Well, that's what I was saying. I was, I was saying there that like, oh, that's what I was going to ask. Did you see the, the, well, you, yeah. Cause you were already in the digital space. So you already kind of saw the writing on the wall that will, where the, it, it was I, headed. yeah. Well, and I think a lot of it I saw was you weren't, you weren't restricted to a paid, you know, a certain number of pages that you're doing. You weren't restricted to a schedule of each month. It comes mm-hmm. out. It's, I'll, I can put it up now. I can put it up tomorrow. I can right. put it up. I can do as much here and there. So there's a lot more flexibility with that. Um, doing the video stuff. Um, the And I was also doing graphic design and video work for client for clients and stuff outside of the magazine yeah. stuff. Side hustle. Just, that's kind of, I guess, always how I've done it. Because like I said, uh-huh. when I was at Icon, I was doing tailgate. Yeah. And then when I was at Street Trucks, I was doing graphic design for you know clients and stuff that I still do today. Um, but you, and you didn't have those costs of the distribution. Cause like I said, at that time being editor and then kind of in charge of certain things in multiple magazines, I was getting all of the data, all of the financials. Like I had more meetings about like, okay, this is the, the profitability. This was these months, this was that, you Mm -hmm. know, and, um, you know, and we were, we were launching other magazines and stuff like that, but you you had a lot of you know if if it cost a hundred thousand dollars to put an issue out 60 70 percent of that cost was hard cost was printing paper shipping like getting the copies that don't sell back like those were all shipped back and you had, you had to, to pay, cup, for, you you had had to pay, pay for, for that those, yeah. and you had to pay uh you had to pay the distribution company and the grocery store or bookstore a percentage of every sh- space you had on that shelf. Yeah. So there's just a lot of costs and that starts to thin up. Well, on digital and web, what you got a couple hundred bucks for hosting. Right. Is that a hundred thousand dollar uh, number? Like that's a real number. What it would cost to put out an issue. Back then it was around for one issue of street trucks in one month cost from all of that. Plus salaries, you know, ad sales commissions, all that, everything involved, it cost about a hundred thousand dollars to put one issue. So when out. you hear people talk about magazines that went away, cause I mean, you remember in 2014 when Ming truck, went Ming away, truck yeah. how it was such a big deal. Mm-hmm. And there were so many people upset. Do you, uh, you don't think a lot of people uh, really understood exactly what went into producing a magazine and getting it on, th- on the shelves? I think a lot. Yeah. I think a lot of people maybe well, don't only, understand. They're only looking all at the one cost thing. They're looking at how much is it to print? 5,000 magazines. That's uh, yeah. like, oh, it cost $10,000 to print this. Mm-hmm. Then that's the only cost that they see. That I, I remember when I started Grinder Magazine. I was going to say, you know, yeah, that's the only cost I saw. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you then I started you to realize, Oh, I got to pay for the paper that's printed on? <laughs> or, oh, I got to pay for someone to lay it out or design it? Or, yeah. or I'm designing it? Yeah, luckily we, yeah. Um, like we had that all in-house. Yeah. But like, I remember shipping um there was a shipping story that's kind of funny so the very first it, we had them printed in uh at our buddy in the clubs uh he worked at a graphic design company in upland so okay they were a printing it was company. like minutemen or something no because I, I know that was a place in upland um, i forgot what it was called but it, he was actually the guy that was going for the job against mike alexander for mini truck and magazine and oh. he didn't oh. get it hmm. so 
he um, he went to school for art design and all this stuff. So he ended up getting a job at this printing company or art company type. Yeah. S- similar to Icon, but not the studio type thing. But more print. Yeah, more, more print. print based. Yeah. So we were like, we'll start our own magazine. So we started our own magazine, printed it there. And then so we went and picked it up, all these boxes of magazines. And they're at my house, and I was like, I have to ship like, these. Right, out. What do I do with these? Well, I just, I, we didn't sell them, so we just want, we wanted to ship them to shops so yeah. they could just get them in the hands. So I remember I set up an account with DHL, and I got all these labels, and I got everyone's address, and I did it. And I put them in front of my house, and DHL picked come and picked them up. And then I remember the next day I get like an email, and they're, hey man, this magazine's sick, and I'm all. How'd you get that already? <laughs> the next day. <laughs> I printed everything on next day. <laughs> DHL. I had like a How much was that bill? thousand oh. dollar shipping thing. And I went, I just remember. I'm I just on the overnighted phone. a, basically a pallet worth the <laughs> a, bo- yeah, a couple boxes, hundred pounds. Like each box is a hundred magazines or 50 yeah. magazines. Or something. Anyways. And I remember I called DHL. I was like, I'm not paying this. And <laughs> they're, they're like, sorry, no, we already and did like, it. What do you mean? And I'm like, well, I'm not paying this. Like, they're like, well, you messed up. I was like, no, I understand this. I said, I don't think you understand. <laughs> I'm never paying this I bill. Can't, I can't I pay this. I physically can't pay this bill. It's not that I won't. I can't. I'm like, so I don't know what you guys are going to do, but uh, yeah. And it so, just went away? <laughs> it just went away. Yeah. It, it, it was let, so that, let that be a lesson right to everybody. Just, well, they had the same <laughs> labels. Ones were green and ones were like orange, and I just didn't know. I didn't know anything. Yeah, you just, yeah. yeah. It was so funny. I just remember that next the call the next day. Man, these are cool. They they came out great. I'm all here. Hold on. Wait a second. Wait, you're in like Montana. Yeah. So how did you get these? How did you get it so quickly? Like yeah, truck can't drive that quick. <laughs> yeah, I just think that like during that time when because uh, I I was familiar. Like I'm not into the industry as obviously as far as you and you are, are concerned, but I was knowledgeable. And when that was all going down and people were so upset, I, I'm all like, I don't think you guys really understand exactly what goes into making this happen. And then, yeah. you know, there, and and, I was going to ask you this question about like how you like, cause even now people are still trying to launch print magazines and trying to bring back that nostalgia type thing. And again, I don't know if even those people know exactly like it, it's also, you know, like any business corporation stuff, you know, you, and I think like the source prime media now, you know, motor trend discovery channel, whatever that kind of, group the the hot rod trucking group they had a much larger corporate structure because you know they had combined you know the peterson publication which was hot rod and, mm-hmm. and sport truck with then you know the truck and mini truck and low rider off-road magazines they merged several times with other companies so then you kind of had a lot of managers a lot of you know structure so all of those people have salaries to get paid you know you have multiple editors your art people your ad sales people so there's a lot of salaries attached to a magazine mm-hmm. as well as the printing costs shipping making costs the actual magazine. making the actual magazine mm-hmm. and so a lot of it they would look at um you know the newsstand sales was basically the profit uh ad sales is mostly what they tried to have cover the cost that of everything going and that's why like a lot of people would complain i remember of oh there's too many ads in this there's too many this and that and and so there's always like the the ratio where you tried to have a balanced number of you know editorial and the the ads yeah um and and sometimes that kind of skews or a little bit but basically they were just looking at is okay this is Whatever at you know if they have more ads coming in they'd bump the pages up in that because that covered the cost or they would shrink it down so that's what paid for the magazine and then the newsstand sales and subscriptions too but those you know weren't always those, super profitable yeah. those mm-hmm. are kind of just it was mainly the the, the newsstand, newsstand sales. yeah and so that's why you know we're going back to like the competition of you know content and, and mm-hmm. features kind of had to be. And like the cover truck was a coveted spot because that's essentially what well, the editor was going to look at is this is what's going to sell. Mm-hmm. This is what's going to attract someone to look at it. Um, and I think now, you know, so now like you have some of the magazines that are out there where it's a smaller scale, where it's a handful of people, you know, they're maybe only doing it as a subscription or an online thing. So they're not printing because it, you'd have like five copies of a magazine and if one or two sold at a store of those five, you can, it would be considered a win. Okay. 
but then there would be three that would be trashed or sent mm -hmm. back. And yeah. this is all under one one uh, media like umbrella, is what you're saying? Uh, of what the newer ones are no. like that. Are you talking about older ones or newer ones? I was saying older of like the newsstand model. Oh, okay. Selling okay. it on a newsstand, you'd put five copies at a store. I see what you're saying, yeah. Two of them would sell, and that would be a profit, mm -hmm. but you'd have to waste three right, to get those two basically yeah. to because sell. Because you're still... I remember Grinder Magazine got approved for newsstand sales, and mm -hmm. we were going through the process, but, you know, barcode and... Yeah, you got to do this, all that. And yeah. all this stuff, and I, I remember just reading all this stuff, and they're just like, yeah, if you... Don't sell these. We send them back to you, and you still had to pay for them. For them having them. There. Yeah, yeah. It was like. Mm. So it just became a business model, if you will, that didn't you, work in this this era. But the guys that are doing the magazine itself, it's just it's a smaller scale, and maybe they're not maybe having all those new yeah, stands. So, so costs. a magazine can mm -hmm. still work. Yeah. Now, just in a different, totally different way. And that's, yeah, you just yeah. got to look because at, I, can you, if it's going to cost this amount to make, yeah. then what do you have to sell? And like, how can you reduce that cost and yeah. sell Cause like, more? With new magazines, they're selling at bookstores instead of grocery stores. I wonder if that's the difference. That, I mean, there's probably maybe less cost associated with it, or it's just, you're not trying to go into. Because a grocery store, there's millions of grocery stores. Yeah. There's only a few bookstores. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, smaller scale or like, I remember... Uh, you know, like Walmart or something, you go, okay, there's, you're, we're going to put you in 30% of the stores yeah. or something. And then they would try to, you know, there's people that would try to map out, you know, where, where it was where going to sell. sell, where, you know, okay, this, this store, this region always yeah. sells a handful. So let's so, uh, do that. Like so. say like the new mini truck magazine that's, that's coming Yeah, that's what I was sort of like alluding to. Mm -hmm. There are like um, there is the the new mini truck and magazine that's that's going to come out. There is mini truck and era magazine, which I think they use like a whole totally different thing. They did they, they do this thing through like a a website that puts together magazines for you yeah. and ships them. For so you. it's like on demand, it's some some kind of like printing. That, I know yeah. that like books you can do that, yeah. or photo books and stuff like I think that. That's so like maybe the same model that, that they're going after. So yeah, that that's what I was more then, alluding to is is people like that trying to revive or like bring back this print media and and i think if if you're doing that that it sh it needs to be a good high quality it needs to because you can go on youtube you can go on social media and see these things for free essentially mm -hmm. there so you got to give them and that's what i was trying to do in the the later part when i was at street trucks where truck and mini truck and the, the paper quality was going down we were we went up yeah. we went the opposite way we, we just tried to figure out where we could make that cost up somewhere else. Yeah. But it was, if, if these are become, if people are purchasing less magazines, then make it a reason for them well, to it, purchase it. It has to be more, it has to be special. Yeah. The photography, like the photography has to be good. Oops. <laughs> that's, that's, that's great. <laughs> I'm going to turn these off. Um, and that's, yeah, it, it needs to, to be, Something that you're yeah. not because a lot of times with magazines, you just flip through it. Well, that, cool. There whatever. Was a, there was a few magazines that were uh, smaller magazines that that talked to me, and I was like, "Well, you got to pay your photographers." I'm like, "You have to have good photographers, mm -hmm. and in order to have good photographers," and they're like, "Yeah, but we don't we don't make any money on our magazines, so we just we'll let whoever shoot." Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah. like, mm -hmm. "Then it, it's it's what makes it special." Then? Yeah. What makes what makes if if. What you makes know. somebody want to yeah. buy it then? Yeah, like, I'll go shoot, as a photographer, I'll go shoot my buddy's truck for you and put it in your magazine. But if it's a stranger, I want I need to be compensated for yeah. that time. Mm -hmm. So you are you might get like one free photo shoot here and there. But like, I would always tell these guys, like, you have to pay your people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, And that's the thing. And that's what I've, I've looked at that too, where, okay, either it's, a, it, you know, if I've, doing content or, or doing something for a company. Okay. You're using this to then increase your business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is my business, yeah. but so there's gotta be an exchange. Yeah, exactly. There. Like yeah. with the, um, with the new mini truck and magazine, like um, it's, I'm just, I, it's, it's got my curiosity peak so, so much about how that's going to, that's going to go. Like, I hope it goes really good. And I think they do have some really good photographers. Mm -hmm. Um, shooting for them and stuff and the guys that are running it know what they're doing so and I that's think, yeah it's it's just figuring out how and they only have to you pay can make it 
essentially no one except their photographers if they're paying their photographers because if they're doing it, if it's just two guys like running this thing and it's their side gig, like you can, really, yeah, you can, you can make, put some machine. equity into it to, to yeah. build it up. Yeah. Cause you're not, like you said, you're not paying advertising people. You're not paying like all these other yeah. people. You're just, and that's always the tough part of the balance of like, okay, if, if you have all the, that staff or whatever, you can, do it bigger and do it more, but then you have more costs right. or if you're just yeah. kind of doing, doing it yourself, you're able to kind of creep so, into it. So. so all these things that you learned <laughs> and all this, this stuff, it goes in now into auto revolution. So how did that, how did auto revolution? So become? yeah, so me and, and, and Marcel Venable, um, we started that um, right after uh, leaving street trucks. Um, he was doing a lot of the tech uh, work, but then he also had a, a media marketing agency that I did some graphic design work for, mm -hmm. for some of his clients when he, he needed it. So kind of brought that all together. And so, and it's gone through some different iterations. Um, but th the main focus was always, uh, video, um, you know, then photography, stuff like that and, and digital. Yeah. Um, we, did kind you guys of, come up with it together or how did it, how did that happen? It, it was just, we need to do digital because a, we're not going to be able to afford a print magazine and why do what other people are doing, yeah. do something mm -hmm. different and do something where you see potential to get in. Um, so, but we did start out kind of as essentially mostly an app. Uh, cause you gotta remember too, that was the time where apps, oh, yeah, everyone's everybody's, gotta have an app. Everybody's trying to do an app. Yeah. So, so we did a, did an app. Grinder has an app. <laughs> <laughs> different, different. Zing. Y Zing. Uh, if you download that expecting <laughs> truck content, you will be sorely disappointed. Or, or not. Or, or, hey, or whatever yeah, wait, you're into. You know, hold on. Can I make it a little astute observation here? <laughs> We're building these trucks for dude's approval. Yeah. That is just getting dude's approval. It all fits together. <laughs> there, there's always the joke that, you, you know, if you got in this to try to attract tri chicks, it's yeah, no, not because you're thing. you're going to get all the dudes at the gas station yeah, coming yeah, up yeah. and yeah. talking about the truck. Yeah. Um, so, but, but, and how we did that where, so we would, okay, let's do, um, you know, issues. And I want to say this was at the time too when Apple had a, Apple newsstand. Oh, so they that, were trying yeah. to do digital versions of magazines and, and sell subscriptions. So we we're like, okay, well let's do that. So we had, which I had actually, I had spearheaded that, uh, at street trucks. So we had a street trucks app yep. with digital copies of it, you know, available digital subscription, you know, in probably 2013 or something. Mm -hmm. Um, so we did that, but I didn't want to do it like a flip. Thing, it was like no let's take advantage of like an ipad or something yeah. um so we would have like um we started out with what's called behind the wheel um and so that was like more documentary series like video series um f you know profiles on people so first few that we did we did i did one on joe yezzy mm -hmm. square body syndicate um we did Demo. one uh no that was a little bit later okay um but and we did something different with that. I was uh, roadside. And, and were these on Amazon? Not initially. Not, initially. not for the first couple of years. So first couple of years, it was. Um, I think we hosted on Vimeo because the qual like YouTube at the time, I don't think had the quality. They still don't level. Yeah, they, no, yeah. Vimeo well, was more the quality. So we we did. So I would do like a layout. Like I would design a layout, essentially kind of like an article, but it would have the video. We'd have really cool photography, a little bit of an article talking about the person, but then it'd be like a 10 minute video about Joe Yezzy. You know, we did Jay La Rosa, who was an NC member, had a lot of S10s, and then he was doing all the cafe racer mm -hmm. motorcycles. So we did on him, um, a guy, uh, Tyler Hadzikian, Tyler Surfboards. Um, he was a surfboard shaper, but also built hot rods. Now he's a champion sprint car racer. Oh, cool. So did did a profile on, on him. And so that's what we started out with um of basically i looked at i like to we like to tell the stories where like a feature in a magazine you maybe it kind of it, it came to where i could churn out a feature for a magazine like photos edited written story in like 45 minutes yeah because it was like okay here's a paragraph about the guy here's a, a little bit about the truck yeah. now here's a list of everything he did to the truck yeah and the photos and there you go mm -hmm. so it was like well no let's you know, like 
we were talking about like Joe Yezzy, where he he got his love of square bodies because his dad had square bodies. And then he's collected all these and he's doing all this stuff. It's like, where can you tell that story better than, than, than video? Right. And, and way more in depth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that started. Um, but then, yeah, we, in 2016, we got a partnership uh, deal with Amazon um, to put that content up on Amazon video. And at that time they were paying like triple what YouTube was paying. Yeah. So it was, all right, let's, we just mm-hmm. lean into that. So long form TV show style productions, it all had to be, you know, 20 minutes long, 30 minutes long. Um, and, and so we pushed on that and we, we started doing, yeah, roadside. Uh, we did that with, you know, Delmo, like following a build and, mm-hmm. and that whole deal. And we started doing, doing some roadsides with like Jeremy, Trey mm-hmm. five customs and Frank, um, and, and then you, you know, helped shoot some of that and then shot one of those kind of contract you to, sh- you know, shoot a, one of those episodes yeah. for us. And, um, so we started doing a lot of different shows on Amazon. Um, we got into Tubi, like other streaming services and stuff like that. Um, and unfortunately we kind of, because of that, we, we didn't focus on like YouTube yeah. as much. <clears throat> um, that was kind of the, that and social media was kind of like the, the, teaser to get people to go to Amazon right, right. or we would debut on Amazon and then a week later put it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Amazon, of course, like everything shifts, changes, revenue rate went down. Now, now everything's buy or rent. You can't just stream it for free if you're a member, you know, so we had to shift kind of shifted back towards YouTube mm. um, and, and putting the content there. So then a lot of it was maybe more shorter form stuff like that. And then, you know, we, started doing podcasts about three, three years ago now. That's what I was going to ask you about the podcast. Cause like how many are you doing and like how, like where's, um, auto Too many. <laughs> <laughs> I know everyone is. I, um, and I assume that like all the, the people within your network of podcasting were like doing their own, but it was, you, you're setting all those up. Yeah, we've set, so there's been a couple. So the first one we started was called uh, car guy confessions mm-hmm. and that's, uh, hosted by a couple former hot rod magazine, Carcraft editors, uh, Jeff Smith, Cam Benti, and then a must car builder, Steve Strope, um, Pure, Pure Vision, who's he's been on, he's had, had a TV show for a while. He's done cars for Joe Rogan, for, you know, all kinds of celebrities and stuff. And that was, you know, during the pandemic, obviously, when a lot of podcast stuff was popping up, it was like, all right, well, what can we do? <laughs> what yeah. can we do? And yeah. so we, you know, but we started doing that in, in, Jeff's garage, you know, he had a big garage at the time. He lives in Iowa now, but he had a big garage in LA, you know, that he would build engines and do tech for, you know, hot rod and Holly and stuff. And we just set it up in there and then it grew and we were able to kind of keep that going. We're like, like almost 80 episodes of that, you know, now. And, um, we do it, we do them every other week, just, just for sanity and (laughs) management sake. Um, but then, yeah, the, the second one we started was high octane hustle and that's, uh, Jane Thurman and Teresa Contreras. And they had had something similar where it was called riding shotgun, um, where, cause she's a driving instructor, did a lot of stuff for K&N. She did uh, her and her husband do autocross build. They have a shop that builds Corvettes. And so she would do something where it was more just social media where they'd hop in her Corvette you know, with somebody, a guest, or, or she would jump in their car and they would just mic up, go pro and just talk. Mm. So Almost it's kind like of a, a podcast. Co- comedian, like, cars and coffee kind of thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. same kind of thing. Um, and they weren't doing that as much in the pandemic. They were doing Zoom ones. So, mm-hmm. you know, they and, and I've known Teresa for a long time. Um, she's done a lot. She does a lot of builds with Ford, um, a lot of Bronco stuff. Um, she did the build up on my Forerunner. Um you know, painted my crew cab that I had back in the day. And so they were wanting to do, they were, they were like, Hey, can you, we need some help editing some of this stuff. And, you know, we were seeing what we were doing with the podcast stuff. And we were like, how, why don't we just do a podcast? <laughs> like mm-hmm. just, let's just, so it, rather than half ass this, let's just make yeah. it. You know? So is it, are you going filming everything, editing everything like an auto revolution is like the parent the dis- yeah, like the distribution stuff? kind of okay. of it. Because um, that's the thing, like, you know, video, like, we, I've always been video, 
video, you know, heavy. So like podcasts, yeah, it's on audio platforms, but you know, if you can see the people doing it or yeah. also mm-hmm. for us, a lot of it, and, and especially with like the influence and impact podcast, being able to put up a picture Mm-hmm. Of, oh yeah, of the vehicle you're talking yeah. about, yeah. being it for people to be able to see that, I think is a is a big, big part of it, and especially for video where you wouldn't get that otherwise. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's almost like if you're recording audio, you might as well just point a camera at someone and and, and that's yeah, yeah. It it's is also more work and stuff like yeah. that, but at the same time, it's like why not? Yeah, yeah. But like as far as auto revolution, go, so it started a little bit on YouTube, Amazon Prime, back on YouTube now, like yeah. And then what's the main focus? Like, what's your guys's, like, what's your, it, right now plan? I think it's just, it's Whatever. content. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, just, it's cause we'll, we'll do the short form social stuff, you know, have the podcast and then we still do. It's just, it's, it's tough to try to, you know, the builds, building stuff or yeah. doing the tech where, yeah, podcast, we can record this and depending if you're using one camera or three, yeah. <laughs> you could, Boom, there it is, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, whereas like we were doing, you know, which was good with Amazon when they're paying for the long, you know, yeah. TV shows, you know, it would t- take six to eight months, let's say, mm-hmm. if you're doing a full start to finish build on a yeah. vehicle and then you're getting maybe one episode out of it mm-hmm. yeah, or one video out of it. So we've kind of looked at, okay, like let's do shorter along the way build videos and we have our podcasts you know that we do and then you know we've had companies hires for like kind of documentary stuff as well so kind of include that as well uh so it's just kind of like okay here's different you know social short youtube podcasts long form like you have to so what you're saying is you just, just utilize, attacking every utilize it yeah. all yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was gonna be, look be at every platform, my, how you can put something out there, you know, take advantage of it. That's gonna be sort of like what my my next question was gonna be like you you survived the transition from print media into digital media, and in that transition, the the oversaturation of print media was one thing, and then that went away, and then you kind of blaze into this new frontier of digital media. But now that digital space is starting to become oversaturated. Mm -hmm. So how do you, uh, like you, I think you just answered that question, but like, yeah, that's, uh, and that's the tough part, but it is, I think, and, and versus a large company, like a magazine company where, you know, I looked at it as, you know, we were a media company. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think some of the uh, managers, whatever corporate, you know, we're we're a print we're a magazine company oh i see Mm -hmm. so then you've pigeonholed yourself into just magazine printing so all your staff and all your your money coming in is is centered around printing a magazine so when you have and that was the thing like you you had to have if you wanted to do more digital or put into that it was going to be hiring somebody or putting more resources in because all your people have to make sure that the magazine still makes money. Right. Mm-hmm. And that was, you know, it, they weren't able to make the transition because they had such, so many things writing on a magazine yeah. selling every month. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think being more independent and, and smaller scale, you can figure out, okay, well this isn't working or this is now not the way. And that's, where more opportunity is, we're going there. Mm-hmm. So are you a hundred percent in on auto revolution? Like that's what you do full time or full time. Uh, I, I do have a handful of clients that I do graphic design work gotcha. for, for website for, and, and some of them have ever ones that I've been doing, it been forever. doing since I was at street trucks. Gotcha. And, and they are, even their businesses have changed to yeah. different things, but i um, still doing that. And then I, I don't know. I have a hard time saying no. <laughs> and I think too, with, you know, you guys can understand that being that you're your own business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That then it's like, Oh, well, I don't know this good opportunity in your head. You're Let like, no, I'm going to say no to this. And then you're like, okay, yeah. well, I'll, what do you, okay. So what do you need? Like, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I know. Yeah. I know that. And, multiple, and, yeah. and too, uh, I think it's sometimes those, those little things turn into something, mm-hmm. you know, where, like I said, that one of the clients that I have doing, you know, it's not automotive or anything doing graphic design, doing all his website stuff for the last 
11, 12 years just started out as I need some photos of this t- new touchscreen vending machine that we're producing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I had a friend that worked there and I did photography. So, okay. And then that's progressed and, you know, yeah, all that. So it's, it's kind of like, okay, you don't always know when those opportunities are, but it's also too, if you're, you know, yeah, you're tied to that job or you're in that full-time job every day, you're, you're, even if those opportunities come up, you're probably not going to do them because you, cause Got your, you're, yeah. you have your regular job. Whereas if you're kind of your own, doing your own thing, you mm-hmm. can take advantage of those. Yeah. You yeah. Know, when you see you need it. Your horizon's a little more open. Yeah. I say that a lot. I say like, you know, a lot of people ask like, well, how do you, how do you get into this? How do you do this? In, in any aspect, whether it be digital media or, or screen printing or anything, it's like just showing up, just show like showing up and meeting people. And that's what you're saying. It's mm-hmm. like, you don't know who you're going to do something for or meet or talk to or who that person might yeah, yeah. bend down the yeah. line. So it's, it's just consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Consistency. Consistency. And, and yeah. And it's just, if you quality and it's, you know, and sometimes it's struggle with millions of things going on or shows or whatever of just, getting it done you know yeah. and if someone needs it they need it so, so are, are you guys focusing a lot on the podcast stuff like is, yeah. are you seeing that like that being like a really good thing it yeah it's it's been been growing and, and being a good thing and, and we've kind of joked i guess you could say of of automotive media and marketing is always usually five to ten years behind all the other industries oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you look at the templates of other people or other industries like just wait a couple years and automotive will be you know mm-hmm. kind of getting into that you know you talk about magazines and print stuff to video and digital and social media um so with the podcast i think for 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 us a lot of it is you know with youtube or with social it's it's being able to have consistent content yeah and it's it's being smaller it's it's sometimes hard to have that with or or you're doing a build or doing a install or something and might not always get finished or work and then mm-hmm. it's just a lot of variables so we're like with this okay we can have s- some consistent stuff that's a little bit easier to produce um yeah it's kind of build exactly but then it's like okay this is like this is kind of cruising along we're able to get some money coming in sponsors and stuff on this then okay now let's do some of these things yeah mm-hmm. um and also too you know one of the reasons we started the influence and impact podcast um is back to that storytelling um you know and we did a documentary it, it kind of allows you to be a documentary without exactly doing all the work uh, of yeah. a documentary uh-huh. yeah, exactly yeah. but you're not trying to fool people that it is a documentary at, into the at the same time it's just people talking so it kind of like does a couple and, of it, and it is a little bit of a documentary when a lot of the stuff we're talking about we have personal experience in yeah mm-hmm. you know it's or personal just relationships or with, personal relate with mm-hmm. that person or something like that but you know like we did uh, a documentary called obs clash oh yeah uh yeah. Mm-hmm. F- five um, four or five years ago that was that long ago yeah no that's the, that's the <laughs> funny thing we're talking about that was 2019 was Whoa. SEMA when we had those the two trucks out there yeah, but that's so crazy <laughs> um but but that was really cool because uh and we're starting to see that i think with mini trucks now of there is the nostalgia the back in the day the 20 mm-hmm. 30 years and, ago well, there's stories to be told yeah and people maybe don't know the yeah. origins of all of it you know, so we did that and that got a, that was on Amazon, you know, that's on every platform that did huge mm-hmm. for us. And, and it was cool too, to bring in the style, you know, mm-hmm. trying to like the eighties Miami vice. And yeah. The, yeah. Like the, well, I love all those the, kind the, of the, vibes the graphics and stuff that you do in the beginning, like, you know, the yeah. VCR stuff and yeah, no. Killer. And that's, and that's a lot of where it kind of came from was cause mm-hmm. we were okay. Well, we had like footage from the nineties or, mm-hmm. you know, all this stuff was That's, back then. So let's make it bring, bring somebody into that era, you know, with the style of it to, to kind of capture that moment. And it's also what you were saying way earlier about, you know, 
we tend to get into this thing of content, 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 and then it takes someone to say like, oh, let's do it, take a different approach at it. So mm -hmm. like, instead of just making videos and uploading them, you're like, well, let's try to immerse the viewer in this. Yeah. You know, so it all Make fits the style. The, right. Make them get into that, that mm -hmm. era of it. Um, and, and that's kind of what, you know, a little bit with like the influence and impact of kind of, and it depends because obviously you're talking about all different subjects, but it's at least kind of get someone who maybe either remembers it to, or to relive it or mm -hmm. someone who doesn't know anything about it to be able to understand yeah. all yeah. of it. So we'll, we'll trace, you know, and a lot of it is more on the, the, the aftermarket custom side, you know, like our, what we do, you know, versus like, you know, Chevy came out with this and then they came out with that and then they came out with the, you know, it's like, yeah, you can it, Wikipedia that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you it's can't not, necessarily it's not, it's not Wikipedia very, like, uh, uh, information dump yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. What, um, are, do you have, find it hard changing gears? Cause like I'm going through struggles, like we all go through struggles and what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And we get to these points like where we stop making things because mm -hmm. we're like, I don't know what to do. So like mm -hmm. I'm, I had this thing. I, just, I don't want to do like I've been doing show coverage forever. Like, and go I go to a show, film a show, put music to and it. And I'll, I'll be honest, I've never personally liked doing show coverage. Yeah. It, and I know, and I know you've done that and like the feature. So it's kind of like, all right, you, you, that's Grinder. Yeah. <laughs> Let, he does that. Yeah. yeah. And we, I like, doing we like it. doing the story. You know, for us, it was like, okay, let's dive into the story yeah. element of mm -hmm. it. And I like doing, I like doing show coverage. Um, because I like the music. I like kind of make, it's almost like make the editing of it's fun. I, I just never liked filming it. Yeah. It gets, it gets a little rough. Like I can't just stop doing stuff. Like I, I make money freelancing for, for other people and stuff and, and editing for other people and stuff too. But mm -hmm. it's like, I still, I can't just, but like, you what, have your own what's stuff. You want to do TV. What is it going to yeah. do? So like, that's why I kind of started. I got that little hard body of trying to figure out if I'm going to like film builds, doing the Tacoma and stuff. So it's just finding like, shifting gears in, in a way and but you mm -hmm. guys do it a little different it seems like you have like more i don't want to say like market research more prof like more dialed more professional like seeing what numbers and things like that like i uh, <laughs> I, I mean i i think maybe because of of like the magazine stuff we're maybe like with certain companies and stuff maybe like directly like connected a little bit yeah, yeah yeah um it's because and that's the thing too like because of that obs clash bell tech hired us to do their 40th anniversary video yeah yeah mm -hmm. tmi hired us to do their 40th yeah. anniversary video and so and that's where and I, like how you said you don't like doing show coverage i don't like doing that like like that, a like a documentary like or do, a, i tried a documentary i was like let me try that <laughs> and so i did it and i was like okay i like it but at the same time I don't, I, I don't know. Like I'm, my brain right now is so scrambled. I'm like, I don't even know what I'm And that's the thing. <laughs> I, I really like doing documentary yeah. type stuff. Cause that's what I, I enjoy watching. I like bringing in the style, yeah. like, you know, the B roll and then the music that kind of sets it up. And mm -hmm. I, I like that yeah. versus, you know, show coverage or a feature yeah. kind of thing. So it's just, I think it's just finding what, a, you know, either you're good at what you could be good at, what you enjoy doing. I don't know any of those answers. But then also seeing like, how can you monetize it all? How can you monetize it? And yeah. how can you put it out there? And mm -hmm. like with the podcast, it, it stuff, it does help being okay. We've kind of got a set schedule yeah. of when it comes out. Cause then it like forces you mm -hmm. a little bit to, okay, it's, got to come out this day yeah you've yeah, got to record these us, yeah. so many things it, it, whereas maybe if it's something else yeah it, it, it you're like yeah, it gets pushed do off or I've it got, doesn't yeah because you know. I've, I've got shows from when was the mini truck show in la uh, mini october. truck revival or whatever yeah yeah october, yeah, october. Yeah. Well, that's the next show i'm editing it's now march yeah. yeah so like i have that so you're on the magazine schedule yeah, basically 100 <laughs> we're like that Show coverage, maybe it'll come. Hopefully, yeah. it'll come out before the next year. Show. Yeah, that so, sometimes <laughs> happens too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> we're gonna turn this into from a what is it a? Uh, uh, Can't AI just do all that now? Yeah, I don't know. You're talking <laughs> about intervention. No, I'm talking about like, like you go to a show, film it, and then oh. and then put it out there. That's Ooh, like a, yeah. a a feature, right? Yeah. 
Um, instead, we well, turn it into promos where we just instead oh. we wait till the show's almost coming right, back right. around. And oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like yeah. a promo for the show coming out versus coverage <laughs> yeah. for. And that's why I've been like yeah. going down and, and filming the build of my Tacoma, the process mm-hmm. of building my Tacoma, and I'm really enjoying that. It's, yeah, it's a little hard because I'm really far from the shop and that it's at right now, and I'm going to be far from where it's getting painted and stuff like. Mm-hmm. But. I'm just learning like what I need to show and what I don't need to show. And then the way to tell the story and the mm-hmm. way not to like, that's where I'm kind of at right now. And, yeah. yeah. And, um, and I've got another guy that's helping to film shows. So it's like the transition is going to go from to him to film Cause he likes doing that stuff. And that's, yeah. Sometimes Which, that's honestly makes me like doing mm-hmm. it again because I don't have to do it all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'll see him do it. And I'm like, Oh, well, no, I, like, that, looks fun. that looks fun. I could do that. So, <laughs> I mean, I, so Dino's this past, year i brought out a camcorder handy cam yeah. from oh, like cool. 2003 yeah. i think so still digital where i could just mm-hmm. connect it up and pop it in but you know it was like 480p whatever and and i had probably more fun doing that because That's there was awesome. no there was no expectation no and and like i like i the, literally I, the I expectation was to make it look like shit <laughs> <laughs> What's funny? What's funny is I made it look probably even more shitty. Like when I when I put it onto the computer, I yeah. was like, like it looked too good, too good. Yeah. Where it just looked crappy, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of one like, of those wait, things. This just like, looks like I did a bad job. Yeah. with a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. bad job with a good. So camera. I added, I, I maybe added a little more of the the scan lines uh-huh. and stuff into it, and and. Uh, you know, and I found like some cool music that just was straight up like yeah. Belle Viv DeVoe. And I think that's sounding. the problem I'm having is I'm so, I, I'm like, I need to the music to be a certain way. I need it to, to transition to a certain, like if I'm going you've, this you've way. You've got your own style well, set. If I'm going, yeah, if I'm going like this way on a truck, I don't want the next truck to go that way and yeah. the next truck to go that way. So I have to like find the shots that are. Yeah. And it's just like, it's so refined that I beat myself up mm-hmm. and it, I don't need to. And then people go. No cool <laughs> yeah, yeah and that's the yeah. thing like if you didn't do any of that it would probably still be good yeah. the same but news, for you no. but i have to it's it, yeah i'm not gonna i yeah. don't want to put out i just because i want it to be a certain way mm-hmm. you know so like yeah it's, it's just tough no and that's yeah so it's it's either finding a way that that is you know enjoy fun for you again yeah. or like you said, having someone else come in to kind of cover that part of it. And yeah. that allows you to do other things. Um, and then like with the podcast, like the influence and impact, it was like, okay, I, we would like to go out and interview all these people or tell all of these stories, but it's, that's going to take a long, longer yeah. time, you know, take a budget to, to f- travel or fly something like that, yeah. where, okay, we can kind of, tell the story ourselves, you know, and, and just show, you know, put the photos up, put all that stuff and, and tell these stories and be able to do it a little more consistently and, and, and more easy, you know? So it's almost like the, and then with editing the podcast, like for me, at least the, the creative side of it, you do, that's all done ahead of time. Yeah. That's done with setting up the shots that's done with, you know, making your intro or your music or your whatever the look of it and then so each time you do it then it's just kind of almost plug and play right um and then so that kind of helps too to then if we have to do the you know documentaries or do builds or feature stuff i can get a little more creative on those and and you're not like constantly trying to be creative yeah. every time and burning yourself out. I so it's kind of yeah. trying to find that balance a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's exactly what the, this, our podcast has done. This mm-hmm. one, it's just, it's given us the content to, mm-hmm. I don't want to say stay relevant, but well, to keep you, the yeah. channels relevant, to keep it going. Yeah. It's just something you're able to have something constantly yeah. Yeah. out there to, to post about, to have on, you know, pop up and yeah. stuff like that. And then you can, do the other stuff and i've you know when i've listened to your guys you're talking about what you're doing at that show right right you know so it's like yeah you're so not it's almost like a kind of a recap <laughs> it's, thing. yeah it you know there's yeah there's kind yeah, of a, where does the music show coverage fit in like that started on the dvds mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. you know like music crazy going around and then it kind of came into the youtube space and then i was like 
okay, me and Cody, when we started grinding, we're like, okay, we want to make this more, a little more cinematic, yeah. a little more this. So, so we started that, but where does that fit into the uh, entertainment space? Mm -hmm. Like, well, and now it's kind of like, you look at Instagram or TikTok and reels. It's, you can, you're do essentially it. doing the exact same thing that yeah. you've been doing with DVD, you yeah, know, like, so where show does coverage. a 10 minute show coverage video fit in with all music? Like, right. Like, yeah. Like who's going to, well, you know, it's, it's funny you mention that because I kind of have like a similar thought about um, creating reels and stuff. Like I created a reel where it was like a bunch of multiple shots of, it was Panda's truck. Yeah. So it's like a bunch of clips together, mm -hmm. put it together, put it out in the space and, you know, get some traction, get some views. But then also just walking around one truck or your the Hummer just coming into the oh, frame. Yeah, this new thing just that cool I do now. shots. <laughs> yeah, like, and, and I realized like, Maybe people don't want a bunch of like edited, edited. clips yeah. together. They just want to see one thing real quick, some cool music, and then move on. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask you because you were talking about the, the magazine space or maybe the autom automotive space in general kind of being behind the times mm -hmm. on like things that are working now. Like, what do you see as that? What's working? What this space might click into? Um, I mean, I think for media wise, you're especially with now. Hot Rod Magazine's probably going away this year, you know, which was like the magazine. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going down, I think, four issues this year. Um, so I think, and, and especially too, like we had a couple months ago, uh, there's a SEMA puts on a conference called MPMC. So it's a media trade conference. So basically it's all media and you meet with 40 different companies, you know, in the aftermarket space and just talk and discuss. And it was... You know, interesting doing that on the magazine side, d and then doing that for ourselves, and then now you know where it's kind of almost ninety percent all digital. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where you used to see it would be a sea of twenty editors from one company, you know, that had multiple magazines. Mm -hmm. So it would basically be like half of them. You know, basically it was everybody was a corporate or a, a magazine editor, full time job person there was maybe three of those guys, you know, at know. this last one, most of them were all a shop owner that has a huge social media following, you know, or you're, you're in, or a racer that has a following like your influencer kind of, mm -hmm. if you will. So I see with like the media stuff, it's going to be more, this person creates cool content or this shop has really cool stuff that they post. And, those people working with these companies or putting out the content on whatever platform it is. So it's, 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 I think just becoming more and more personable and personalized where it's, you know, yeah, they're, they're looking at grinder, but it's also Brian, mm -hmm. you know, or custom life and Frank. And it's, it's, we're, we are influencer content creators. We are, which we always have been. We're, yeah. we're, we are, we are the movie and the actor and the director and the producer and the, this. Yeah. Because like you go to you ask it, uh, someone uh, you know under thirty and you say hey who's your favorite actor and they don't usually have it it's it's usually at uh, like a or sometimes so, yeah it'll be a YouTube it'll, person yeah go to SEMA it's all uh, influencers YouTube people Instagram people whatever but these they're still like but they're and then they have their own camera they're filming themselves mm -hmm. they're making the content they're the star of their own movie so it's just yeah with the access of these little cameras. And all this and things, social like, media and, and digital. social media, yeah. like you don't need a uh, studio actors and all this stuff. Cause the entertainment that I watch is a guy that turns his camera on, drives his van around, makes food and like goes camping. I entail, that's a lot of my entertainment intake, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. he did all that. Yeah. And so like, there, it like you like we're just making the movies now, and I can also understand what you're saying is like because you said we have been the, the influencers the whole time because yeah you throughout your whole career of magazines and media coverage and and features yeah you've influenced you've helped influence no the and whole that's thing. what I get what you're saying kind of yeah the funny thing of like people you know hating that term or even when we were doing the magazine stuff or doing yeah. starting with our revolution and like the influencer term was popping up. And we were like, oh, you know, you're not a legit journalist. You're just some social media dude or this and that. And it's, you kind of like got to take a step back and go, okay, we created content. It was just in a magazine mm -hmm. or a video. 
you know, there's other people creating content. It's just on, you know, on social media. It's, it's all the same. It's just yeah. what and platform is it on? How is it done? Yeah. It's all the same. And, and even in the magazine, just too, like, look at this cool truck with these cool wheels. You should buy those cool wheels. Yeah. And then they go, I, I'm going to go buy those cool wheels. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And now you're on Instagram. It's like, Hey, check out these wheels from, yeah. you know, yeah. You know, hot rods by Boyd, and you can go buy it with my discount code. You know, mm -hmm. like go affiliate code stuff like that. It's it's just a different thing. But what's cool that I've seen, you know, with that happening, you know, if if it was a magazine, you you know, trucking started in the seventies. They saw, you know, they were doing Steve Still on. I can't remember the other guy. They were uh, Street Chopper magazine editors. And then they were at a bike show and these guys were like, Hey, you guys got to go check out this van run. Mm -hmm. So they went to the van run they saw how big it was and all that scenes were like, Hey, we need to make a magazine about that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of times the magazine used to, there was very niche, you know, magazines where like, then you had like jet ski magazine yeah. or RC plane magazine. Yeah. Well, all, all, a lot of those or all of those have, fallen off because it costs so much to do that mm -hmm. but you know with like that guy in the van you know stuff that's a, a niche you know or someone doing woodworking or trucks cars and stuff yeah. like that so now you can have even more of those niche stuff and someone can be successful at it because it's basically just yeah. them and then on the and their camera you know and then advertising uh money Instead of like a company, like say it, if you have a, if you make a helmet for a motocross and you have these influencers on Instagram, your money, you could just go to them mm -hmm. and pay them to advertise your stuff instead of paying a magazine or a publication because mm -hmm. it's going to go, your dollars are going to go much farther. Yeah. Well, and that's, it, it's much more, you can get much more targeted with it. And being it just because it, it honestly, like it just comes down to what makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense for it doesn't make sense to make a magazine if you're trying to make money, it, you know, like, or you just have to do it in a certain way at a certain scale and, mm -hmm. and all that. But you know, the, I think where it has gotten difficult, I'd say is, is for a lot of the companies that are in the automotive world, you know, the big manufacturers and stuff where it did used to be, you did a few events, you bought a, you know, add in a magazine, you know, like you're talking about like a, you're good, like a wheel company or yeah, something. like a wheel company yeah. or something like you, you know, displayed at SEMA, maybe you went to some other shows, you had, had an ad in a couple magazines, like, you know, like if you were a marketing guy, you were like, all right, cool, I'm done. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's cause that was more or less, yeah. as, unless you started, you know, sponsor racers or yeah. maybe certain things. That was kind of the only things you could do. Right. Whereas now, like you've got hundreds of influencers that you could connect with, mm -hmm. tons of shows, tons of content creators, magazines, yeah. TV, you know, there's just so many different, you know, Google AdWords, Google, you know, there's just so many opportunities for it where it's good, but then it's kind of overwhelming. Yeah. 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 So. Cool. Yeah. It's a, it's an interesting space. Yeah, we're just trying to navigate it. <laughs> we're all just but trying to sit here and navigate I, and it. I, and I think, too, it's just like I, I always I, – even years ago when I was in college, I was like trying to go after – I didn't go after any other job for graphic design that wasn't automotive related because I was like, okay, this is what I enjoy doing, mm -hmm. and I enjoy being creative and, and doing design stuff. How can I make – bring it together to make money at it to – be able to be focused in that, you know, kind yeah. of deal. And I think it's just continuing to figure out ways to, to do that, to yeah. and doing it as good as you possibly can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's another thing is just and genuinely too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Make sure it's genuine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, cool. Well, well, thanks for sitting with us. Man. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Well, and thanks for letting us borrow this, this very nice space. Next yeah. episode, we'll be back in our, <laughs> in our rooms. <laughs> In our rooms. In our rooms. <laughs> well, we, there's some magic we can do. Just take a picture yeah. of the green screen. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to say before we wrap um, it up? Yeah. I mean, the usual, you know, auto revolution on social media, um, Influence and Impact is podcast. The 
I, I don't know what your guys' schedule is, but I think probably the one you guys are on would have come out before this. Yeah, don't we maybe. No, this will be next week's episode. This will be Monday's episode. Uh, this or a question and answer. And oh. Because this, I might make yeah. this the following week. Okay. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. No, one so, so yeah, definitely <laughs> please go check out our truck show uh, episode of Influence and Impact with these nice. guys on it. Yeah. So And the mini truck stuff. The, yeah. Uh, the mini truck series you guys did. Yeah. So we did, uh, yeah, four part yeah, was really um, cool. was of great. the history of the mini truck stuff, kind of going from the 70s, mm -hmm. the van run stuff up till... You know, it's funny kind of what's going I, on I now. I didn't know that that was a podcast. I thought it was like a documentary style. Mm -hmm. And I have a, like, I'm real terrible about focusing on anything <laughs> documentary. <laughs> so I'm so bad. Yeah, yeah. And he tell he goes, hey, did you have you seen the Auto Revolution mini truck? And I go, and I said, I haven't. I said, I know I need to. I just haven't been able to get through it. And so I like turned it on. I was like, oh, this is a <laughs> fucking podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Because the way you guys promote it. He thought it was like a documentary. I thought it was a documentary. Well, I mean, that's, yeah, we kind of try to give it that. I know, but I was yeah. like, oh, I can watch. I'm so like back. Cause, yeah, because so with a podcast, you can kind of not zone out, but it yeah. it doesn't need to have your attention I can watch a podcast the while I'm editing photos. Yeah. And that's what I do most of the time anyways. That's same here. Yeah. Like, I can't watch a documentary and edit photos. I'm yeah, like, you're going to miss like too much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I was like, oh, no. And so and then I went and watched it right away, and I was like, oh. Yeah, it was really good. It was great. I loved it. No, and that's, I think I reached out to Brian. I was to, to you, I was like, hey, do you want to fact check us on any of these things? <laughs> like, cause, and that's what's funny was, especially with that, is you remember certain things, but then when you really go and look at it, you go, oh, that was a couple years difference, mm -hmm. or, you know, it wasn't exactly maybe how you remember it or the yeah. timeline. The thing that I found really interesting was it was how engaged with each episode I was. And like the, the first uh, three were like, I was like, oh, this is really interesting. This is great. But then when it came to my era, I yeah. felt like more engaged. I was like, oh, I was there. You I remember lived all, all that. Yeah. Like, I remember these things. So. And that's what's, what's. And I'm sure like older, like guys who've been in it way longer, like they really, you know, identified with the earlier episodes and stuff. But it was, yeah. it was cool. Well, no, but that's what's funny is I think probably the third episode, which was the early 2000s to, mm -hmm. you know, probably 10 years ago was probably I got more messages and comments stuff yeah. about that but uh -huh. that's because that's our that's the kind of era of it class i guess yeah. yeah yeah um so but yeah we did four episodes on that we've done um the first few were on c10s um so that was really cool as well to trace like the you know explosion of c10s from yeah. mm -hmm. you know like dino's shop you know, his appliance store with 20 trucks to 9,000. Yeah. Um, and we've done import cars. Um, we're going to be doing muscle cars. Um, it's kind of cool. Cause you guys are, you explore the entire space. Yeah. Of and that's why, you know, we named it auto revolution. It makes sense. We it's, it's it's a good, a cool it's didn't want to, really cool you know, name. when someone comes up with a name and you're like, yeah, you're why like, don't ah. I think of that? <laughs> like that's, because I, auto like evolution. Uh, it's just like, Oh, that's yeah. it was, it's like right in front Revo of your face. a motor is a revolution. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, like one and think about that part. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you didn't? No. <laughs> no, that's yeah. No, that was the the double because some of that was the we're going against magazine. We're going yeah. against so it's gonna be a revolution. revolution. You know, we were all messing around with that, but yeah, it tied in to be Motors revolution, and, revving, yeah, you know, all that stuff. So much smarter than us. <laughs> <laughs> grinder. Grinder. Grind, yeah. Hey, grinder was thought of in the driveway, and it was uh, well. But that at that time, that was dragging was, was that grinding. And, that uh, was the, and metal work, heavy fat. Yeah. And uh, you remember the magazine Blender? I, it it was sounds like a, familiar. Like a, it, was it was like, like a, a Maxim, but yeah, blender. I think so, so. Like Blender, I always thought the name was cool because it's mm -hmm. like blending everything together. Yeah. It's like you mm -hmm. put everything in this thing and you blend it all together, and that's what you have. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, grinder, and I was like, you cannot not work on any type of vehicle. Without a grinder. Something. Yeah. You're grinding. I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. so that's and, and then I was. looked at it at the time, remembering, thinking grinder as in dragging. Mm -hmm. Grinding. You know, you're, yeah. you're Cause at first grinding, it was going to be know. called asphalt junkie. Mm. Oh, that's funny. Cause there's an asphalt junkie. Is there? Yeah. Yeah. There's there a clothing company. Oh, so it was going to be called asphalt junkie. And then if you go look when Chad Lucas got tired at mini truck and magazine, mm -hmm. his editorial column. Oh, that's right. was called asphalt. He called yeah. me one day and he's oh. like, Hey man, uh, remember when you, cause I called Chad the very uh, first, I was like, Chad, oh, you, I came out with this name. It's so called he's Asphalt Junkie. He's like, that's a really good name. And then I didn't name it that he was the uh, only one I ever told. So but he, when he got he hired at mini trucking, he called it that, but he called me before it came out. He's like, Hey man, I just want to let you know. <laughs> 
I called it ass. I was like, oh, that's really cool. He's like, oh, okay. I just yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, if you weren't using it, then yeah. 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 I've but, always thought to bring that back, but then the word junky kind of. So, yeah. And I know we're keep trailing on about this. Uh, um, Crime Pays Video. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we, and this is, they, you know, I've kind of gotten them a little bit here and there to do some stuff for street trucks, do some video stuff. Um, and, you know, we had a talk conversation with them. Um, this is probably 2013 or something like that. So they were doing the crime page. They were trying to get more sponsors, more people. Like they were just trying to get yeah. bigger and, and expand a little bit. Um, and I, I think it was Marcel that said, and first thing he was like, like, boom, we said, no, we'll change your name from crime pace video. Cause that ain't going to get any big sponsor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they started doing the weekend celebrity mm-hmm. productions that, which was, a, 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 it's such a great name. That is weekend, weekend celebrity. celebrity. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a great name. That was a good deal. Yeah, yeah. Especially for, for the truck crowd where it's like, yeah, the weekends are the shows. And yeah. All the that, weekends so. are the shows and we all think we're celebrities. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, you, I am. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're on camera right now. There's lights and stuff. So yeah. But, Oh, cool. Well, yeah. thanks again, no, man. Appreciate yeah. it. No, this yeah. is cool. Next really time, maybe it. Marcel can join. We'll do yeah, another he's one not sick it. with, yeah. Yeah, I was like, I don't know if we have enough memory cards for Marcel, man. That guy, he, we could talk for a long time. He can time. talk, and he's got a lot of crazy stories, yeah. awesome. too, from back in the day. We'll so, have to get him. Yeah, get him on. As is, Yeah, he, he'll be his own. We'll just hit record, and we'll just go an episode. Lunch. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> like, All right, tell us. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys might not talk. Yeah. No, but, yeah, thank you. Cool. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. We'll see you guys next week. Auto Revolution. Go check them out. Yeah. Bye. Later. Thanks.